<laughs> Clips, how you doing? I thought I'd start early this time because I always uh, punish the people who are early. Hey guys, I always uh, I always punish the people who are early by making them sit here while other people have a chance to join. So I thought I'd shorten that up a little by starting early, and that way uh, we can still. I mean, we'll probably still wait a few minutes after eight thirty, but not quite as much as before. Josh Hogan, how's that barrel treating you? You were the barrel, right? I think so. So, um, yeah, uh, also, while you early birds are here, um, if you think of questions or stuff you want to talk about, put it in there. I actually, I got a couple things that, that uh, I said in my post earlier, if you guys saw it. I said that... Uh, I didn't really have anything particular to talk about. I just missed doing it, which is true. But I actually had a few things that people have asked me about. I have a, a team. You see my Knuckleheads jersey. And we're just now getting ready to um, play in our first tournament. We're, we had a scrim last week. We did really well. It was a great, really great experience for everybody. Um, we're going to practice on Saturday, and the tournament's the week after. And uh, I've, I, I think I've mentioned you guys, I had a... Uh, uh, I had a team that traveled around the country and played, uh, you know, a hundred years ago. And I, I was the logistics guy. It was my team, right? And uh, I did that a lot. And uh, to be honest, it kind of wore me down. So I'm doing it again this time, but I've done delegating and whatever. So I, I wanted to talk a little bit about how to, like, organize a team and do stuff like that without wanting to, as I said in my post, like, have fun doing it and make it so you want to do it without stabbing yourself in the eye. Um and we'll talk about that for a bit. Um, oh yeah, yeah, man. How so? How was that tournament? Put to, did it good? Was it fun? Did you guys have a good time? You like the barrel? Um, yeah. So we're gonna talk about that. And uh, I've seen for for whatever reason this week, like I always try to talk about a uh, a couple things that have been coming up and like currently that, that's going on right now in in the BSTs where people are asking questions. And for whatever reason. Um, I mean, I, I bet I've seen like 15 posts asking about the HK laser barrel system in the, like in the last week and a half or something. If you guys are on there, you've seen them too. And uh, guess what? I have one here. I have for a while. And uh, we're going to take a look at it and talk about it. And we're going to compare it and talk about the Field 1 Aculock kit too, which I also have here. Um, so that'll be cool. Uh, I'm not on Instagram. I'm not a huge social media guy. Um... I appreciate the uh, um, the support with that. Um, third NXL tickets. Oh, nice. Very cool. Clips. Very cool. Very fun. Um, yeah, that's... I'm sorry. I'm just reading the chat so I don't miss anybody. I don't mean to be slowing down on you guys. Um, that's super cool. But yeah, I'm not on Instagram. I know that it. I know that it handicaps my channel to not be a social media guy and like be out on all the, and all the different outlets. There's just not enough hours in the day for me to. It's not that I'm. You know, I, I do computer work for a living. It's not that I'm a technophobe. I just. You know, there's only so much time to do stuff, and um, yeah, I just had don't have the cycles to maintain a bunch of different social media stuff. If something nutty happened and all of a sudden I got five thousand subscribers, I might try to find some aggregator service where I can have automated and maybe I should do that anyway I know there's tools where uh, there, there's tools you can buy that will sort of automate and like an Instagram feed off of your Facebook stuff and whatnot I don't know a lot about it but I've seen it so maybe I'll look into it um, <clears throat> so yeah congrats on your third at NXL um, maybe we're gonna see you guys we're, our team's planning to go into well, cup this year um, so yeah, hopefully we'll be able to hang out with some of you guys. Um, FL barrel worth the money. Um, 
Sorry, I'm just reading. I'm not ignoring your question. So, I have my little spiel on barrels, and I'm gonna I'm gonna wait till it starts to really get into it because I feel like I'm obligated. I feel like it's my uh, like my duty, as you know, my, my whole mission on this channel is for help people to help people get good values on paintball stuff, and um, part of that is understanding how you get value when you spend your money. And uh, excuse me, I have like kind of a, a spiel that I go on about barrels in general and I'll <clears throat> I won't forget your question if if something nutty happens hey Paul if something nutty happens and I do forget just send the question again about the FL and I, I won't miss it I'll, I'll I'll talk about the whole thing when I when I go to this um in fact I have an FL kit here it's not that that anode I always point to the wrong side the anode 170 right there you can probably see that's got an FL kit I had the I had that tip that's a silencio tip that I had anode for it. It's not because a Silencio tip is any different performance. I just got that in a um, like a, a buy where I bought like a few guns from a person and some various gear. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that Silencio tip came in there, and it was kind of beat up a little bit. I mean, not badly, just like from regular use, right? It was just scratched up, and the tip was worn, stuff like that. And I figured, well, I have the thing, and I have all these FL inserts. So that's a good choice to get ammo with a gun because then I'll like, you know, I can refurbish this beat up tip and it'll be nice again and, and match. So that's why I'm using that. Um, you, you didn't have to sell all your stuff. You bought a motorcycle, Paul. That's a choice. That's not, I had to sell my stuff. Nice try though. <laughs> Although I wouldn't be able to live without a motorcycle. So I feel you. Um, well, I'll help you find a setup. If it comes time to buy, to buy stuff. Uh, yeah, Sir, Sir Rick, that's exactly the thing. You've summed up my my barrel spiel in a nutshell right there. Um, I thought I brought a drink down here. I guess I didn't. You know what? We're, we're two minutes early. Bear with me for two seconds. I'm going to jump up and go find my drink. I'll be right back. All right, I made it. You guys should start a betting pool on how long it takes me to spill that, because that's the kind of guy I am. Uh, we're almost there. It's only a couple more minutes. Um, yeah, you, Sir Rick, in the uh, in one sentence, you summed up my barrel spiel <laughs> that I was talking about. Uh, that is true. Um, and I'll bore everybody again, like here in a few minutes when we start with. Uh, that whole thing. Well, surprising. Well, I don't know it's not surprising because there's marketing hype everywhere. But, a t I mean, you constantly see questions in the BSTs about barrels. Should I buy this one or should I buy that one? I have barrel X and I'm thinking about upgrading. And like, you know, people are convinced that which barrel you use has an effect on accuracy or performance in any way. And it, it just doesn't. It makes absolutely no difference. And we'll talk about the detail of that. Um... Oh, Paul, yeah, I see. Well, that was nice that you did that. And the motorcycle was cool. Um, let me see here. While well, we're still giving it a minute. Uh, let me grab something real quick. Oh yeah, let me take a minute. If you guys, you guys are so kind to me. Give me, give me a second. You know, I tried this the other day, and I was so, um, like, I was hurried, right? And I couldn't figure out 
and I, I've, I'll be honest, with you, I've been so busy at work and this tournament stuff, I haven't come back to it. I haven't figured out how to like share up a browser in real time and show it in my stream. And I'm gonna if you, give me a minute. And I, uh, you guys are so great, how patient you are. Um, I am going to try to figure that out now. Um, so if I go to here, here, and I add a source. Um, no, that doesn't work. It makes like an infinite. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's not good. That does not work. <laughs> Remove. Can you, somebody post in there, can you just see that like weird infinity mirror thing I just did on the screen? Can you guys see that? <laughs> Uh, hey, and you're welcome for the shirt. Um, Reddit, I was pretty good about playing down. Yeah, you know, I've actually seen that. There's a lot of pretty smart people in on Reddit, uh, the Reddit paintball sub, for sure. Um, yeah, you saw that weird thing? Yeah, that doesn't work. That's not it. I gotta, I gotta figure out how to be like there's a there's an obvious and easy way it's a super lame that i'm not figuring this out for you uh, game capture image it's not media source um maybe it's this window capture oh it's 8 30 i have to stop experimenting on your time Let's see what this is. Um, that's not it either. All right, I guess I'm gonna give up. I'm not gonna show you a browser. I will. Uh, I will figure that out for sure. Um, go one minute here. We'll get going. going. So, so let me, let me go, go here, here remove that. that. Yes. Uh, image. So, so check, check that, that out. out. That, that is, is Paul's, Paul's new bike. bike. I'm going to try to see if I can't, can't size this better so you can see. I can't quite get the whole thing in the window. But. How about, about that? that? Paul's, Paul's new, new bike. bike. <laughs> Pretty, Pretty cool, cool right? right? All right, All right, so, so it's, it's uh, a couple, couple minutes, minutes after 8.30, we're, we're going to get started here. here. Let, Let me scroll, scroll up and see some questions. questions. Tube, tube to tube, yeah, we, we talked about that for the barrels. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, you know the, those, those I see carbon, carbon barrels, that's, that's one barrel, barrel I haven't tried. tried. Uh, uh, my my whole whole th th I like barrels that look cool, and I like them when they're quiet. And we're going to talk about that with these in a minute, because I kind of had a surprising result this weekend with some of these. So, so yeah, yeah, you know, you know what? what? And, uh, James, James Freak, Freak XL. XL so we're, 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 we're going to bust, bust into the whole barrel thing here in a second. second. But, but the, the Freak uh, is, is not, not a huge difference. difference. It's a barely any difference. difference. Marlon, Marlon, what's up? Um, Jeffrey, glad you got, got the shirt. shirt. Um, tropical, tropical depression. depression. Thank, Thank you very much. much. I appreciate that. So what is the best tea topping, and why is it pineapple? You know, interesting question. Pizza, uh, pineapple, uh, pineapple is, is only the best pizza topping when it's in conjunction with jalapenos. And if you, and if you haven't, haven't done, done that, that, do it, and, and you'll know why I'm right. right. Um, 
Oh, oh is, is it still, still uh, uh, is, is it still, still echoing, echoing now? now? I wonder, I wonder if, if I should kill it and start it over or something. Or something. Somebody let me, I know there's a delay. Let, let me know if it's still echoing. echoing. Oh, I don't know what to do about that. Let me, let me, let me, let me see if I can make it go away. All right, I'm going to kill, kill the, the sound, sound for a second and then come back. back. Oh, wait, oh, I, 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 I see, see why it is. is. Hold, Hold on. on. Okay, well, at least, at least I hope I see why it is. Um, let's try that. Okay, so I, uh, I messed around with it. And l let me know if... Um, if it's still echoey now. Well, the last message I see is Byron. That's from before I messed with stuff. So I, I changed it. Is it better? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, the audio feed from my camera st started for some reason when I was mucking around with all that crap. Okay, so let's let's get uh, let's get started. I, I one of my million hobbies I've had is golf, and there's a super cool British golf instructor guy who has a great YouTube channel, um, and he always says, "Let's get stuck in." So. That's a British thing for let's get going. So yeah, let's get stuck in. So let me get rid of that and get back to where I can see your comments and not be messing with all my other stuff. Um, yeah, so we start talking about barrels. Let's talk about barrels. Um, so we're going to take a look here. I've got the Field One AccuLock kit, which is very cool, and the HK Army laser kit. And... Um, the reason that I wanted to talk about these is you know, I, I mentioned before when some of you were here earlier that um, I like to kind of keep my my live streams uh, relevant to like what's going on this week in uh, excuse me whether it's Reddit or like stuff I'm seeing on the BSTs on Facebook which is as you guys know is where I am at a lot of the time and. Um, I've seen, I don't know, I couldn't even tell you how many. I mean, at least 10 posts asking about this, the HK Laser Barrel Kit. And um, I'm not sure if it, like, suddenly appeared, uh, uh, you know, in extra sites where it wasn't before. I know a and has had it forever. And the sites that we like to go to, like, I got this one from Punisher. Uh, and they've, they've got had them in stock for a pretty long time. But whatever the case is, um, I want to take a look at these. And I always start out... When I talk about barrels, and I, I always say this too, I've got my big barrel test thing coming, and it's not done yet. I, I, I work on it when I have time. It's just very time-consuming to shoot every barrel and record several hundred shots over the chronograph and tabulate the results and make the results digestible and, and all that crap. And um, so it's just taking me a lot of time. But uh, I, I'm giving you guys like the inside scoop. I, I've, I've maintained this all along, and in my many zillions of shots and data recording with all the different barrels I have. So like I mentioned, three different parabolic sets, HK Laser, Field One Aculoc, FL, Freak, Freak XL, um, uh, six, uh, one piece barrels, board for Freaks and Freak XLs. Um, parab I said parabolics. Um, um, disruptive kits that are two piece, disruptive one piece, uh, I can go on and on. I can't even think of all the different barrels I have right now. Look on the wall back there. You can see a couple examples. There, that autococker now has a, a die UL on it, and I have a whole kit of those those silver inserts. The, I'm kind of hiding my EMEC. That's a 16 inch CP one piece barrel, board for freaks. So all these different barrels and the results all the same. And oh, I didn't know that Punisher did a, did a barrel video. Um, so all, none of them have, may have any performance difference, and there is none. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is that there is no dynamic relationship between a paintball and the inside of a barrel. It's not like a firearm where you can, uh, for example, rifle a barrel. The idea of rifling is that the, um, and it protrudes. And every time a ball falls in... Uh-oh. Uh, hang on. I might be... Uh, Something's happening here. I had a pop-up. I hope I did. I, I thought for a minute I was going to lose my stream again. 
I heard a noise. Well, I guess you guys are back now. Do you, are you good? Somebody tell me you're good. I know there's a delay. Hey, Connor. How are you doing, buddy? Um, somebody put us put something in the chat. I had a, like a pop up, and I, I didn't. It dinged. And I didn't look at the screen, and it dinged again. And I looked, and just when I looked, the error went away. Did I disappear for a minute? Yeah, I don't know what happened there. It wasn't that normal YouTube canned me thing, because that just like gives me the axe. Uh, something happened. It might have been my maybe my internet connection flapped or something. Um, so I'll back up just a little bit. But you can't. There's no. There's nothing good can come from. Yeah, yeah. The I have the idea of rifling. Okay, cool. Um, in in purposefully inducing a spin, not only is it very difficult, it's uh, it's not going to be effective. And the reason is that every time the ball drops in a breach, that seam is going to have a random orientation. And if if you happen to be a baseball fan, you know that the orientation of the seam makes a big difference in the action of the ball if you're talking about a spin. Right, this is how pitchers throw cutters, and you'll hear. I know everybody's not a sports fan, but um, if you uh, you hear them talk about a two seamer, a four seamer, and the reason they make the distinction, this is how the pitcher holds the baseball relative to the seams, and it's tricky for hitters because they can throw the ball exactly the same way, and it'll act differently depending on how they orient the ball in their hand. And a paintball is no different. So even if you could put a significant spin on it. Every time the ball dropped in with the seam in a different orientation, it would come out of the barrel in a different way. The effect would not be positive. And so, um, yeah, that's why we're not doing that or even trying to do that. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. And a paintball just has a blast of air straight behind it and comes out of the barrel at a given velocity. And so because there's no dynamic relationship there, when the ball exits that barrel at a given velocity, physics tells us that it will go the same. This is all else being equal now, right? Wind... Um, gravity, all, every, the velocity, all those things being the same, the ball will go the same distance at the same trajectory and hit the same spot every single time. It doesn't make any difference whether your barrel says HK Army on it or Field One or Freak or whatever. None of that matters. It's all about the ball just coming out of there. So with any barrel you have when it comes to performance, as long as you have a reasonable uh, way to match the bore to the paint, and the, ball, the barrel has a good finish on it, and it's straight, that's going to give you 100% of everything that has to do with performance of your paintball barrel. Um, so within that framework, though, um, th that doesn't mean that it's completely meaningless what, what barrel you get. Because things matter. Like one example is that I mentioned that, where is that, that EMAC there has a 16-inch barrel. I like 16. In fact, everything you can see, well, that's not true, not everything. But that M3 up there has a 16. The EMAC has a 16. And the reason I like 16 isn't because they shoot differently. It's because uh, I, I personally feel like I point it better with a 16. Um, so that's what I use. It's not because the ball comes out and like does something different. And there's other factors, too. Uh, how it looks matters. And if it didn't matter, we'd all have like raw aluminum with clear industrial anodizing or like dust black industrial hard anodizing to protect the surface and no cosmetic milling. And that's, that's, that's not the case. We like our toys, right? And we think that we enjoy when they look cool. So that matters. Um, how quiet it is matters to a lot of people. And you can drastically affect that by the porting. And uh, so that matters. Um, different weights can make the whole thing, the whole setup feel differently, uh, depending, like you can see a big difference, for example, I can feel a big difference when I go from say my my 16 inch die UL that's uh, bored for uh, freaks, if I use a stainless insert, like put that all together, right? Compared to say an FL with a carbon tip that's much lighter, right? And when I put each of those on my marker and my on my setup, the whole setup feels quite a bit different. So I'm not trying to say that it makes absolutely no difference what, what barrel you use, right? It does make a difference, but it doesn't make a difference when it comes to hitting something or, or anything that has to do with the performance. So I, just, I always feel like it's my duty to say that every time I'm going to talk about barrels. Because <laughs> you see, every single day, people ask questions about... Which barrel is this? I, like, I have barrel X, and is it worth it to upgrade to barrel Y? And so that I, you know, I feel like my mission here is to help people learn stuff and make good decisions with their money. Um, so I'm going to say that like every time I talk about barrels. So before I continue here, let me just go in here and uh, make sure. Yeah, I know, Brian, you thought I got canned. By the way, 
The last one that happened to, once again, it was it was violation of policy for the pew pew. So I'm really trying to catch myself and not use the bad words. And hopefully I can actually keep us um, keep us here. Uh, Connor, thank you. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, and it's, it's understandable that people are looking, everybody wants to look for a performance that's just no different in any kind of hobby. I played golf forever and people are convinced that whatever golf club they buy, if it can help them to keep the ball 2% straighter or 3% hit it farther, then they're going to buy that stuff. And they do, and you know, everybody wants to get an edge a B we let's face it we like toys so we like to try to justify to ourselves oh I want to buy this cool toy because it looks cool and it'll perform better so it's understandable that that people have these thought processes but with with regard to raw performance of shooting a paintball makes no difference um, yeah m3s come with 15 inch uh, I think it's a is it 14 or 15 I forget uh, a tracing but um, yeah my UL up there that is a that's it's not a ULS which actually comes on an M3 plus. It's a UL back that's been bored for freaks, and a 16 inch uh, tip on that one. That, that's how I normally play with that marker. I just prefer it. It's nice and quiet. So anyway, all right, let's 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 talk about the actual uh, stuff here. Um, this is a pretty new kit. It's the HK Laser Kit. We're gonna, let's take a look at it. Um, this particular one, I got this. I've had this forever. It was like for right the very first shipment of these that that shipped. Uh, I got one, so it's the dust black, and you can see it comes with these um, different rubber covers. Whoops, I popped one out there. Uh, here's actually an extra O-ring on here too. And the, where the, what happens here is we have the tip. I'm going to pull these out as I go. And then there's a back. Okay, so it's actually a three-piece. We have the tip and the back. And the back has, you can see, it has a gray rubber piece. And you can swap those out for a red, blue, or black. Um, it's kind of cool. It, this is just a grip. Uh, some people hold, put their thumb over a barrel, so it might be a grip in that way. Or just a grip to help you take it off. Mostly it's a cosmetic thing, right? And then the inserts go inside this back. And this one has one in it. Uh, it's a, uh, which one is this? This is a 686. So you can see this is a pretty comprehensive kit bore-wise. Frankly, really more granular than you need, if I'm being honest. But it's cool that you have all these different ones. This is the kind of thing that I actually like. Even though um, there's really not any benefit to getting this granular, it has a, a bore for each two one thousand. So we've got 678, 80, 82, 84, 86, um, 88, 90, and 92 all in here so it's cool that it's that comprehensive um value wise frankly it would have been okay with me if they spaced it out to three thousands and sold less inserts and charged less money for it um but it's it's like i said that's not a criticism that's just an observation um and these fit into the backs this way and then the tip goes over this oh i, do, I always do it backwards is it the right way? And they don't reverse thread. I make that mistake too. And you get together and you get your barrel. Um, one thing that people, and by the way, this case is a, is a, it's kind of bulky, but it's a nice quality case. Not going to hurt your, um, not going to hurt your, uh, your barrels and your bag in there. That's cool. Um, this is 15 inch. And this, like I mentioned, this is the dust black one. And, the dust, the dust, I'm, you know, I'm not a huge dust guy. I kind of like gloss better. But this dust black is particularly not attractive. I've seen the colored ones. They sell a, a rainbow of colors in these, and they look pretty good. This dust black is like, like I mentioned earlier, like if we didn't care about appearance, we would just have industrial hard anodizing. That's what this seems like. It's like a chalky, dull black that is not it's nothing like the dust black you see when you buy a marker that's that's done in dust black it's like uh it seems it, i mean i know it's not it's anodizing but if it, it looks like primer like if you ever saw like primer on paint like if it looks like a color you'd paint it before you painted the color that you really want um it's a tough anodizing it shows marks when you rub on it but it doesn't scratch easily at all it's very tough but I think it looks kind of crappy in dust black. If I'm being honest, if you ha even if you have a dust black setup, um, I would recommend getting a different color. Or maybe I don't know if they have a, a gloss black or not. But the gloss black was better. I don't know of a single marker 
that this dust black matches. So cosmetically, uh, not a fan. It has a ton of porting and it's quiet. Um, one thing I don't like about it is they've blatantly ripped off the Silencio slotted porting. And I'm pretty sure, you know, I, 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 I somebody maybe posted in here. I'm, I saw, I mean, I knew the name of the guy who designed that. And, and in fact, he just posted today about it or maybe yesterday and it's slipping my mind who it is. But anyway, I think this is an original design that is, that is you know, done by the infamous guys and they've just like straight up like ripped it off by sticking it on here. And I know that's not cool. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I don't care if they didn't patent it or not. I don't know. I don't know any details about that. Maybe they didn't patent it and it's, it's like public domain, whatever. Um, you know, they, they, they clearly didn't ask or there's no mention in here. Like, like, you know, like it would be cool if they had worked with them and said, Hey, we might want to make a barrel and that porting is great. How about if we put a little infamous label on and they're not an HK team, so that would never happen. But anyway, whatever. I just, that leaves a bad taste in my mouth that, that kind of a thing, but they did do it. So it has slotted thin porting and also the, the holes. Now, the, the thing, I think that completely obviates the usefulness of the slots because my experience, I was just mentioning this with with, um, with uh, Connor the other day. I was telling him this. I've noticed lately, and I haven't tested this, so don't quote me. This is not like factual information, um, but I've kind of casually observed my, I mentioned my Silencio tip there. It's the first one I ever used, and I've been using it a lot lately. And I play, I've played with it in the rain. I've broken paint in it. And I've noticed that it seems to clear itself of breaks better than than other barrels. I had three, at least three times, maybe even more than that, instances where I played my point or multiple points and, and played the whole time, fine accuracy, never noticed a thing, didn't notice that I broke anything. And then when I came in, when I was done, I looked and there was and there was pain in the slots and I took the barrel off and there, and there, were, there were breaks in there. Then I didn't even notice. Um, you know, as far as the balls going everywhere. So, and like I said, this is just casual op uh, observation. Uh, don't I haven't tested that, but it seems like that. And also, just this weekend, we scrimmaged in the rain, and I used it. And their, their, uh, one of their marketing things about that, or I shouldn't say marketing thing, but one of the benefits that they tout for the Silencio slotted porting is that when it rains, water doesn't get in as easily. And um, again, I didn't test it, but I did go play in the rain and look in there and my casual observation supports that. Um, I looked in the bore several times and it was dry, even though it was raining, uh, pretty good. It wasn't pouring, but it was a steady rain. It really definitely, it looked to me for sure like the inside of the barrel was drier and cleaner than it would have been with, with standard porting. Again, not a test, but it was an observation. But this has the regular drilled hole style porting in addition to the slots. So that would completely obviate the benefit of the slots. So on this particular barrel, it's just cosmetic, in my opinion. Um, it is well made. Uh, the, like I said, I don't like this finish at all. It's, it's, it doesn't look good in the least, and it won't match any marker. But it comes in a ton of colors. So, you know, don't sweat that too badly. Mostly good. Apart from that, I see no reason to not recommend it. it, uh, it as, as I just described a minute ago, by definition, it, like, it's a barrel. It shoots. It has a good bore, so, and you can match your paint. Mm. Excuse me. That's all you need for it to be, perform well, and it does all those things. So that's the laser. Then let me let me see before I move on if I have any questions here. Um, M3 worth the money. The M3 is possible. You you can argue that the M3 is the best paintball gun ever. I'm not saying it definitively is. You can also argue that for a couple other markers. Wow, oh boy, I hope I didn't say the bad word. I think I did. Um, you could argue that uh, it's the best. Um, along with a few others that you could argue that it's the best. And no, it does not have problems like the amp. Um, HK looks like the Chalky Type 3 Anno. Um, yeah, so I have never seen one of those Torx, uh, Connor. If, um, if they have that very dull, uh, I didn't know it was called Type 3 Anno, but you can kind of see the way I'm holding it up. Maybe you can see the tone of it, what I'm talking about. It's that very, it's not like a satiny, nice, kind of anno it just uh, it just feels like a flat uh industrial anodizing like not something that anyone would do for cosmetic reasons right um so yeah maybe maybe so uh guy who designed the silencio bear when it came out um 
personal idea that he partnered with Infamous. Yeah, they're cool. I don't know the guy, the dude's name, and I don't know the answer about patents either. But um, yeah, they just stole it for this, and that gives me that leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I, I don't. I stay away from judging. Uh, you know what people do about that. Um, I certainly wouldn't. I, I got this to test it and to do a review on it and include it in my thing. I, I wouldn't use that personally. And uh, when I, uh, I'll be offloading that when, when we're done with it here. Um, yeah, J and J Edge Kit. I have had one of those, and it's that same anno. Yes, that's exactly that's what I'm talking about. Um, let's see. Uh, well, so Porter. Um, it wouldn't match it, but it would look okay with it. Um, the, so he, Porter asked a question about the, uh, would it match if you had a, an EMEC or an Ether 2 with the, with the glass reinforced nylon body? And, um, it, it doesn't match it, of course, right? That, that, that has quite a texture to it, that surface, but it would, it would look fine on there for sure. Um, so, okay. So let's take a look at the field one Aculock. This is another kit. These, by the way, these are 200 bucks. Um, I had, let me see, these are 180, I believe, yeah, these are 180, and some of the big places have them on sale now for a little bit less. The Field One Aculock, is, I'll get a little smudge on there, we used this this weekend, uh, I put it on a loaner gun, comes with six backs, so not quite as, um, as granular as the, as the HK kit, but it has uh, 7.5, 7.9, Eight three eight seven nine one and nine five. Which, while it's not as granular, the the spacing is a little larger. Perfectly adequate, in my opinion. Um, the very nice machine quality. I like the I like the different colors, so you can easily pick out which one is which. Now, these are all black and white, but that's an option. You can get these with the colored insert, so you can easily pick which one's which and see which one see that they're different. It just happens that this one is the one that's all black, but. Um, it's a nice case with a neoprene flap in between. And the way these work is we have a front and a back. And I'll just grab this one insert here. Also a nice case. You can see obviously way more compact than that one. And the way this works is we take the back. And the, the back here has slots machined in it. Hopefully you can see that if I hold it up against my face. Um, it's like a keyway sort of. And the backs have little tabs on them. If you can see that in the camera. And the way this works is we slide this in. Oh, I'm sorry. And by the way, you can see here, there's a chamfer here along this front edge. And you'll see where the tip lines up with that in a minute. But we put this into the back. Oh, wrong way. Into the back. And the tabs line up with the slots. And then you'd give them a twist and a little pull. And they stay in that slot. And the way that works is when this barrel now is threaded in into the back, the, the back side of the tip pushes down on that chamfered area and locks this in place, hence the AccuLock system. And it holds these backs in extremely well. They're going nowhere. High quality machining. The, the finish is excellent. This is a gloss black one, as you can see. Uh, and it's a very nice finish. It's a tough finish. This this has been used quite a bit. And there's, in fact, this past weekend, I just mentioned, um, one of my uh, teammates had some uh, marker issues and I busted out the six and I, this is the only barrel I had with me that wasn't a 16 inch and he's a snake guy. He didn't want the 16 inch one. So I, um, I put this on there for him and he dove around the mud all day long. And it doesn't have a scratch on it. And he's like, a, he's a nutbag. He will, uh, he was diving into the snake with the commitment that made it look like people were attacking him with actual firearms. Like that's, he, he was, he's amazing. And, uh, but anyway, he treated that thing. Uh, like that, that marker, like it was his enemy. And it came through with flying colors, no marks on it. Used it, it's great. Um, one thing about this that surprised me, and I went out and tried it in my backyard uh, to confirm, because uh, I hadn't used this one yet. Um, and it's, it's loud. If you like a louder barrel, this is for you, for sure. Um, I was kind of surprised and it made me it made me think back. So let me I'm gonna get back to my screen here in case anybody's commenting about this. Um, so um, yeah, uh, it surprised me because when I did my review of the Force, I used the bear, the Aculoc that came with it, and I didn't really think anything of it. I, I hadn't used it on other markers, so I sort of assumed that the sound was the sound and. And, and whatever 
Um, but now that I've heard this on the six, yeah, I want to let you know that's not true, A Trace. And a lot of guys like egos partially because they have that louder pop snap shot. Uh, some people do like it louder, not a ton. Hi, Lucy. Um, but yeah, um, so Connor mentioned here, yeah, the Aculock is a great design. The um, the uh, that chamfered front where it is the where the where the um, I mean. The, let me, let me back up a little bit. The back, it's not like the back is super big and the insert wanders around in there and the and the tip is the only thing that locates it. The machine, the tolerances for all of this are very good. The, um, the even without that locking in, the bore would be straight. It, it's, it's, it's not an interference fit, of course. You don't have to like take it out of the press, but it's very, like a freak insert. It fits in there just right. The, the twist lock thing works great. And then when you lock it down with that tip, it is definitely locked exactly in place. It's a great design. Um, very cool. Um, like I mentioned, though, yeah, I, it, it seems to be loud. And I wish I'd noticed that before because I would have tried a different barrel on the force to see if it was... Uh, I, mean, I have to assume that it's actually quieter than I thought because this thing, when, when I heard my teammate shoot the sick, which is, if you've heard one, a pretty soft shot. They're not very loud. I like made me like snap my head around when I heard it fire. I'm like, I can't believe that sounds like that. It was really a surprise. So um, that was uh, that was interesting. I see Virtue mentioning notice that the forehands are fairly loud. Uh, yeah, I think it is. The, I don't think partially. I think it is the barrel. I mean, if you, I'll I'll make a video at some point when I when it, when I bust out. I'll bust out something that has that soft like Vanquish or or like I said or that six. Uh, but it was really a surprise. It was. Um, Clearly, this is not like, oh, maybe I didn't pay attention. I mean, it was a clear difference. It made me sit up and take notice. Like, I wasn't even paying attention to what he was doing. And I didn't know it was him at first. And I heard that noise, and I, like, stood up from my pit. And I'm like, what is that? And it was him with the six. Um, it was quite a surprise. But uh, apart from that, if that doesn't bother you, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful barrel. They have a 16-inch tip, and I have used that one with it. I have the 16-inch tip, and it is quieter. Maybe just because it's longer, not sure, but I hadn't used it with a 14, so there you have it. Uh, if and it's not, and by the way, it's not like a cannon; it's marginally louder. I'm just saying that it's enough of a difference that you definitely notice it. It's not a question where you would be debating with someone. Oh, I don't agree with you; it's not louder. It's clearly louder, but um, you know, it's not like the difference between a puff and a crack. You know, it's not a massive difference, but it's a it's a significant difference. So something to think about with these. I really like these. Um, okay, so let me, let me well, put that away later, I guess. Um, oh yeah, one other thing about this, by the way, if you're a snake guy, um, one thing that I wasn't a fan of, and maybe you know, a lot of people maybe don't care about this, but you can see this is this design here that's machined in this these holes. They're cool. They look cool. They have nothing to do with anything. They're just they're just aesthetic. This, this stuff, and then this fits inside there and threads through. When my I mentioned that my buddy was playing in the snake and like diving around like a crazy person, this thing was completely packed with mud. And when I when I threaded it, I tried to clean it out as best I could, but I didn't have running water. Maybe I should have left it together until I got home and could put under water. But when I threaded it out and took it out, the it turned out that it didn't scratch it, but it felt like it was scratching it. Like when I tried when I got it out of there, it was so packed with dirt and mud that uh, I'm afraid that over time it only he only used it one day, but I'm afraid that over time you'd get some cosmetic wear in there if you don't get the dirt out of this before you take it apart. But, um, yeah, really nice design. Very well made. The inserts are extremely well made. Probably the nicest. This combination of back and insert is probably the best one of any barrel that I know about as far as machining quality and manufacturing quality. Su super nice. Real, very cool. All right. So, um, let's see. What do we got here in, in our our comments my snake player is legendary he is awesome and he is a guy i didn't know him earlier in life I, I met him not that long ago he's a super nice guy and i've seen pictures of him and when you see a picture of him from like a few years ago and then you look at him in front of you it's it, he the pictures look like a guy who ate that guy I mean, he's I don't know how much weight he's lost, but he's like an Adonis now. He looks like he's carved out of wood, and he used to be bigger than me. I mean, he's not as tall as me, but he was like rounder than I am. And he 
has lost like a zillion pounds and he's actually preparing to compete i think in some bodybuilding like he looks like he's carved from stone and he is amazing he's super cool and great work ethic and really nice guy um let's see uh did i miss anything in here fourth with a lurker quite a bit quieter that's interesting connor yeah like i said that that when i had that force that actually belonged to Anthony Leodoro. He's the ugly paintball guy. And he was nice enough to buy a brand new one and ship it to me. So I didn't play with it. I didn't mess around a lot. I just shot it, I just shot it a bit and then, and then sent it to him and did a little video. So I didn't try with other barrels. It makes sense to me. I'm sure that it's quieter with, um, uh, with a lurker for sure. Um, looking forward to a new G6R from Field One. Um, yeah, I haven't heard anything about that. Uh, that, that would be cool. Um, I would, I, I, you know, I, I'm kind of on record as saying, I mean, I, people love G six R's. There's a ton of people. It's funny, if you see a thread in the, like on Reddit or Facebook BSTs where somebody says, which marker has the best shot ever or the smoothest shot ever people show up there and say G six R no question. And I don't, I don't get it. Um, I admit, I admit it. I, I bought one. And I paid a guy to uh, teach me to tune it to exactly the best way possible. And even when the printers were set up right, it just felt like a clacky mechanical mess to me. It felt like a really nice spider. I, I, didn't, I didn't get it at all. But lots of people love them. I know I'm in the minority. It definitely looks cool. They're light. They cycle really fast, and they're efficient. And those are all great things. I didn't like the shot or the feel of the, of the action on it. But again, that's just me. So, because the LVs ergonomically are not good for me, because the, the combination of the fat body and where the AT pipe is doesn't leave enough room for my fingers, and I'm constantly running into that grip. That's, that's why I don't have one. But I want one. Uh, some kind of poppet gun. So, I'm ho marker. Some kind of poppet marker. So, I would like to see a new G6R, because I want to try one, for sure. Um... <laughs> Virtue says, I've driven up the prices of clones of vanquishes. Well, good, because they deserve more money. They're awesome. Um, let's see. Looking for G6 stars. Send my next one to you. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll send it to you, Connor. Um, all right. So that's one thing. Excuse me. Okay, there's another thing I've seen five or six of in the last week is questions about cleats and um a lot of places now have turf but other places don't some places are grass some places try to be grass but it's all beat up and it's like hard packed dirt um and all the, and there's also this, this is kind of in um in line with kind of the trend in in paintball is that there's a lot, a lot. Like if you look at Reddit and you look at Facebook, you see constantly, you see posts or people like me where they're like, I used to play a long time ago and I'm older now and either my kids are getting me back into it or I just, I just want to come back into it. They're not young guys, old, older folks getting back into playing, which is awesome, right? Uh, but the modern style of like soccer cleats and football cleats, which is what everyone generally recommends, um, I don't think I'm alone in this as an older generation guy. The construction of them is like the, the, the focus is to have them be like as light and thin as possible because they're meant as an athletic shoe, right? Like if you're a wide receiver, uh, you want to wear the lightest possible shoes that give you the traction you need because any extra, every extra gram is one more gram you have to move, which in theory is making you run not quite as fast as you could be. So the construction of them is like a very thin polymer with a super thin sole and cleats on the bottom. Um, and, and that, and that's it. And I don't find that to be comfortable at all. I tried a couple pairs and I didn't like them. I, in fact, I still have my gear bag from years ago and I busted out my old Adidas turf shoes that I had from like a million years ago and they were great. But when I wore them for like a month and the soles fell off cause they were 20 years old. Uh, so I had to find something else. So I just wanted to, um, yeah. So I, I questions about cleats and, um, but anyway, I went and found some alternatives because I don't like that style of cleats. I don't think they're good in the woods if you like to play different styles of paintball. 
Um, because they're not designed for that. They're designed to run on turf and well-manicured grass. That's what they're engineered for. They're very sort of single-purpose. And don't get me wrong, a ton of people love them, if not criticizing them. I just don't like the way they feel on my feet. I don't like playing with them if I'm in the woods. And I, I in general, don't like them a lot. Um, I don't, on top of that... Um, and I'm going to mention something about golf, golf cleats in a minute. I know this from playing other sports. You may want to stay, stay away from golf cleats. But on, on top of all of those things, uh, I have been suffering. For, I, I injured my Achilles tendon. In fact, it was playing paintball 20-something years ago. And uh, that has in turn created a condition called plantar fasciitis on one of my feet. And um, I'm not going to go into the detail, but it makes my feet hurt a ton if I don't have really good arch support. In fact, I have like custom orthotics I put in my shoes so that my feet don't hurt. I'm just, I, just had, I had to get a couple cortisone shots just a couple weeks ago to try to heal up my plantar fasciitis enough so I could play paintball. And um, anyway, th those types of cleats are not good for that either. They're like very thin. They're not super supportive. They're not meant to be because you're only supposed to wear them for an hour of football playing and then take them off. They're not meant to to be running around for six hours and wearing them around. So I've come up with a couple alternatives. I wanted to mention um, golf cleats are not bad. Um, the, this is the problem though with golf cleats. Be careful because like, this is, another, this is kind of the same thing if you, if you ever try to wear running shoes playing basketball. This is the same phenomenon. They seem like a good idea, but they're not. And here's why. The point of golf shoes is to be stable. If your feet are like this, they're, they're to be stable this way. And that means they have a very wide uh, platform that you're standing on. That platform is not designed to slide when you like run and slide into a bunker. And it's not designed for lateral sideways or any, any movement besides moving straight forward. Well, they're designed for being flat. But they work fine for moving straight forward, but not great for anything else than that. The problem is, if you turn your feet in a strange way, need to be need to be... Um, moving laterally or slide and you and you uh, dig the sole in, you can turn your ankle really badly because that wide platform is a big thing to sort of fall off of as opposed to shoes that are designed to slide and move laterally. So I don't recommend you use those turf uh, golf shoes. They're, um, they look like they're a good idea, but yeah, that for that reason, not a great idea. Okay, so here's an alternative I found. This is one thing. This is the first thing I found. These, I know these are not like sporty looking wise. They're, they're not, don't really have a very modern design. They're not very cool looking. These are Mizuno baseball turf shoes. And you can see the bottom here it is cleated, uh, designed for, uh, specifically for turf use. However, they grip, they're very soft in, the, in these cleats, and they grip extremely well on every surface, whether you're in the woods, bare dirt, um, grass, turf. They grip very well, they're very comfortable, and you can just see by looking at them, if you think about, the, just think about the way those cleats look, those soccer cleats and football cleats that, that, that folks wear, how they have that very thin and elemental look. You can see these aren't that. These, they have a very well padded ankle. Uh, they pretty much feel like basketball shoes with a cleated bottom. And comfort wise, I much prefer these. I'm very comfortable in them all day. Um, they weren't very expensive. I think I paid $45 for these on Amazon. And they wear really well. I've been using these for a year and they don't have any of them. I mean, you can see they're kind of aesthetically, they're a little dirty and beat up. These were like completely buried in mud. Um, they're they're not hot to wear. Uh, they're very comfortable, and I just prefer this style. It's like a real athletic shoe, uh, as opposed to that super thin cleat style thing, which is like a ballet slipper with cleats on the bottom, sort of. And that's very good for playing football. And like I know I know a ton of guys use those playing paintball, but I don't think they're great in the woods, and I don't think they're terribly supportive, and I don't think they're that comfortable. In my, it's just my opinion, but I, these are great. They really do feel like old style high tops with with a cleated bottom. And these these are forty five bucks. I think these I really like a lot, um, and I, I have no problems with these. Now, my plantar fasciitis acted up on me as I mentioned, and I told this is oh yeah. Let me get this back out and show you something. This is this is the issue with foot support. May in case any of you are are uh, with me with foot soreness 
or foot issues. The one thing these don't have is they're not, because that cleat material, that rubber bottom is so grippy and flexible to grab stuff. If you step on like a rock or a tree root, it just molds around it, right? They're very malleable and soft rubber. Um, which is not great for a guy like me who has plantar fasciitis. The, the custom uh, inserts I have, I say custom, but they're not molded for my feet. I'm, they're, they're, they're made specifically for somebody with plantar fasciitis. They're not, I don't, they're not like custom just for me personally. But the point is, what you need is a very good arch support and a support for your heel that's rigid right and these don't have that and when i put the inserts in it definitely helps in fact i can play on them and my feet don't hurt but if you have those issues too and you want to find a way to mitigate that that's why i found these these are solomon um, speed cross 5 trail running shoes and these are really lightweight um, super comfortable uh, i really love this modern it's a really neat sort of speed lace system where you just pull and then pull this cinch down. You tuck this part underneath the lace, and that's it. And they stay tight. They're super comfortable. They feel like you're barely even wearing a shoe. They have a, a pretty aggressive cleated bottom, which I, I've played on every surface in these since I got them. Turf, grass. I ran around the woods, and they work great. But here's the cool thing about these is that they they unlike those other shoes they're very rigid this way right torsionally they're designed for trail running the point of this design is that if you step on a rock uh, or a root or a stick or whatever when you're trail running the whole thing just stays on top of it it doesn't mold around it like those super soft baseball uh, turf shoes do um, and that way you don't hurt your feet when you're trail running it's almost like a I mean, I don't, I don't know anything about building shoes, so I don't mean this literally, but like the feel of it is almost like a boot construction as far as how the, the sole and like the, I don't know what it's called, the shank that's inside there, whatever, is rigid in this way so that it provides really good foot support. Um, but they're very flexible this way and super comfortable. You don't notice that rigidity running around. And like I said, the cleats are real are good. There, you can see, I'm trying to hold them at an angle where you can see the, the cleats. Um, these are a hundred bucks, which is uh, not exactly free, I know. And these particular ones are not waterproof. You can spend 129, I think it is, and they have a Gore-Tex version. These have like this this meshy stuff on here. If you like run around in dewy grass, your feet get soaked because they're like made to be really breathable. But you can get the Gore-Tex kind; they'd be waterproof. Then when you run around on wet grass or whatever, you don't get wet. I don't think anybody really cares about that. Like no cleats aren't aren't typically waterproof, but just mentioning it. So yeah, Solomon Speed Cross Five, um, super cool and uh, very effective. So I just wanted to mention. So uh, Curtis says, um, yeah, I'm gonna use my Zuzu nose kicking with the nuts. Yeah, I'll get right on that. Yeah, Ross is a great place for value cleats. For question, if you want, if you do want to use traditional style cleats that people use, like soccer cleats or football cleats. Uh, and like I said, I know a zillion people do that. I'm not telling you not to. I'm just providing you an alternative in case you're wondering what else might be out there. Maybe maybe there's other people who are like me who don't really like to wear that style of cleats. Uh, if you want to buy regular cleats, Ross is a great place. Try to find them. They're super cheap. Um, let's see. Um, oh, yeah. So, Curtis, the Solomons, um, this model exactly doesn't come in a mid and a high. However... I don't know the model, but look at their site. Hey, Kevin, um, look at the, the Solomon site. There's a pair of, I think they might call them hiking boots. Not sure. You have to look through the selection of them. But I know I saw some that looked like they were like a super similar construction to this, but like a mid, sort of like a high top shoe or like a hiking boot. But the construction was, was similar. Um, one thing, if you like high tops because you'd rather have the better ankle support, um, uh, surprisingly high top shoes don't actually give you any extra ankle support they do help keep your achilles tendon warm i learned about all this stuff when i hurt my achilles tendon by the way it's not like i'm some kind of foot expert um but i asked that of my i i went to, when i hurt my achilles tendon i went to the guy who was the ortho guy for uconn and university of massachusetts and syracuse in new york he was an orthopedic surgeon only because he happened to be at my local hospital where i was living um and when I heard my Achilles tennis, this dude knows about sports medicine. And he explained to me that high top um, 
shoes like that don't actually provide any, any significant support. You have to have way stiffer support than that can, than that in order to actually be supporting the joint. What they do do, however, is keep the um, your tendons warmer, which helps them uh, you know helps them be flexible, which is which is a positive thing. So they are good, but they don't provide a ton of support. Um, all right, so that's enough of that. Let's see what what people up there, Kevin. Big Five, yeah, we don't have Big Five here in in Tennessee, I don't think, but I, the Big Five is like a big uh, sporting goods store, like um, Academy Sports or other places like that. Um, it's not quite as as nice as a Dick's, but it's like a, it's sort of a, they have all kinds of different sports stuff there at good prices. Um, let's see, Kevin, yeah, so that's another thing is if you do play in the woods. I wouldn't recommend soccer cleats or football cleats because they're not made to protect you against penetration in the bottom for thorns and stuff like that. Yeah, not cool. Um, first cocker body on eBay. Very cool. Have fun with that. Um, yeah, well, like I said, the, the perceived value, there, there is real value of high tops as far as the joint with keeping the tendons and things warmer. So they stay stretchy and, and happy. That, I think that's a real value. They just don't actually support the joint from like twisting. You know what I mean? Um, so let's Rick Ross for sports. Yeah, big five. Right, right. Um, okay, okay. So uh, that's that's enough of that. Another thing I said I was going to talk about is uh, so I have my team that we just got going and and we're to go playing this this tournament that we're about to play in. And I wanted to talk about a couple ways. If you want to try to organize your team to do stuff, how you can do it and, and minimize the pain. Um, the uh, I've seen diatcs. I never had some. And now I, I'm diabetic, Jeffrey. So I wear compression socks actually all the time, like almost knee high, uh, especially when I run around because it, it, it helps uh, circulation. Um, so I don't have any advice for anybody else there. I doubt people want to use. Um, I doubt people want to use compression socks, but so team organizing, Every, it's fun to do events, but if you take it all on yourself and try to run everything without setting expectations, it can be a nightmare. It can be a disaster and not fun and even ruin friendship. So I want to t give you guys a few tips about doing this. Uh, first of all, if you're going to do an event right off the rip, the first thing you've got to do is figure out with specific exact information how much money it takes for each person and make sure that they will commit that they are definitely good with that and they can handle uh paying it they don't have to pay it right away right let's say you're let's say you're going to go to a big game and it's four months from now um and so you get all the information together and you get everybody you tell everybody look this is the entry fee uh this is the we're going to camp there so this is the camp i'm just making an example right tournaments will be different but um, you know, this is what we're going to spend as a team to stay at this, at this camp place or whatever. Excuse me. They've said that if we buy paint that in advance, it'll be this price. And this is, and we've figured out this is how much paint we're going to buy. Like figure it all out, how much you're going to need exactly the amount that you're going to pay and then set a deadline way in advance. Like, let's say it's four months from now, right? Maybe you're allowed to pay all the fees, like say three weeks in advance of the event. Don't wait that long. You're going to set a deadline for your team of like 60 days before the event, which if we said it's four months from now. That's two months away that everyone needs to pay. And if they don't, uh, do not. The reason I'm setting a big delta in there is that you know your guys and you got friends. Things happen. And maybe maybe they need to spend four hundred dollars each, and a couple of your guys have only given you three hundred, and they need another week or two to cope with the rest. You can be flexible. But what you don't want to do is have a commitment where twelve guys are going to go somewhere, and seven of them have paid in full, and now you're two days away from the deadline. And if you don't reach in your own pocket and pay the big differential between the seven guys and the five of them paid yet, if you don't eat that yourself and then hope you can get it. You're, you're not going to the event. That is stressful for you. It's going to make you mad at your teammates because they are putting you in a spot where you have to be the bad guy and tell everybody you can't go or you have to reach in your own pocket and pay for six people, you and the five guys who haven't paid yet. And you don't want to be in that spot. So, yeah, I'm, spreadsheets are the way to go. I keep all mine in Google Sheets and I have a couple guys on my team and I'm going to get to this 
who have access to it and they they control part of it as well but i can't stress this enough i think this is the most important thing have a big time period in between your deadline and the deadline right you have to do that because you're going to want to be a little flexible with your deadline with some guys right i keep saying guys lucy I know, it's not just guys i always say that use that word people any people um you're gonna want you know you don't want to be like a fascist to be like oh no it's it's that's it like uh it's one minute past the deadline we're not going you know it, that's not the point the point is if you have a big break in between your deadline and the deadline that affords you flexibility and then uh and you should know by the time that deadline comes and you're like a week into that or two weeks into that and it's still not coming together you'll know if you're going to pull this off or not and if you have to give everybody's money back or if you're going to forge ahead but i'm telling you if you don't do that and you just say okay this place tells us that on on this date we like let's say uh i'm gonna make up a date uh, july 1st is the deadline we have to have paid them by july 1st if it's june 28th and you're still scrambling on getting it together you do not want to be in that spot for that exact reason i said if you have 12 guys and four of them say haven't paid yet uh, and it's two days away, now you have put yourself in a spot where you have to tell everybody they can't go or you have to put your hand in your pocket and pay for five of you, those four people and you, and then hope you can get it back. And I'm going to tell you, you won't get it back. You'll just eat it. So make sure you put a big gap between those deadlines. That is advice number one. Um, advice number two is track it so we mentioned that who was that in the spreadsheet um i lost who said that kevin uh yeah use google sheets google sheets is web-based spreadsheet that is, is very powerful it works like excel and uh, you can easily share it give permissions to other people to be able to use it so you can delegate responsibility and list everyone in there each amount if you're gonna save if you're gonna collect from people like sometimes people will do something like um you know, this is the deadline and you had to pay half of it by th three weeks from now and the rest by this date. So making your spreadsheet, this date paid yes or no, here's the total amount, like all the information in there. So it's easy to see who's done what and that way you can keep track of it. And um, yeah, definitely do that because as you, as you go, you're gonna find out, especially if it's a new thing for you, that there's going to be expenses upon expenses upon expenses that you're all going to split that you didn't think of. I'm going to give you some examples. I'm going to, I'm going to use, I'm going to stop talking about this big game and talk about the tournament we're actually doing. We're a new team. We started last year and our goal, our, our focus isn't to be a, um, a dedicated tournament team. We're a group of friends. We all, many of us used to play tournaments many years ago and we, we like to play at a higher level of intensity than just like going out and shooting the new uh, rookie rentals, right? But we're not, we, we've already done the tr hardcore travel and drills at 7 a.m. Like none of us are interested in that. So we're not a hardcore tournament team, but we, we are a team though. So we're new and we've decided that we are going to play some tournaments, which is awesome, super fun. But we just started from the rip, right? So we, didn't, we, we needed a cooler to put our team pods in which we didn't own yet so we needed team pods um a giant cooler to put them in um easy ups for pits places we play don't have a pit area we need easy ups i ended up buying those because i was happy to do that i just bought them for the team but my point is right there's expenses not there's not just events expenses there's going to be logistical stuff um support type stuff like a, a something to keep your pods in uh, the, these types of things, team pods, if you're going to play tournaments, team pods are a big deal, um, whatever, just stuff like that. So you got to track it all because if you don't, you'll quickly lose track and you don't want to be in that spot where you're asking people over and over again, I can't remember, did you, did you pay or did you not pay? Did you pay or did you not pay? You don't want to be in that spot. So track all the information so you know exactly who's done what and when on all those things. Um, so... And I'm going to, I'm not ignoring you guys questions. I'm going to come back, but I just want to finish talking about this subject. Um, the, um, let's see. Yeah. So, um, uh, see, you don't pay. Yeah. The, the, if, you, if you haven't paid, you can't play for sure. Um, let's see. 
uh, our events, we split the bill. Josh says, um, for early registration. Yeah. Okay. That's a great idea. And here, this is, here's another thing that, that you should do in my opinion, if you're going to do, I mean, if you're only doing like one or two things a year as a team, this, this is not necessary, but if you're going to have a team or a group and you are regularly going to do stuff together, have a bank account that's just for the team and have you and your most trusted ally be the guys. Uh, uh oh, my, I'm getting an error, an error about uh, buffering, which is strange. I have gig internet to my house. I hope you can see this. Okay. Um, let me take a look here at this error. Uh, not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Um, well, let me know if you if it still looks okay. I'm getting an error that says the video is going to be crappy. Um, so let me know if you're what's going on with that. If you're, uh, it was just a bit choppy. Is it okay now? Let me know. Is it okay? I know it's a few seconds delay. I asked that question, then I sit here for a few minutes and wait for the answer. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Um, we'll see. I may need to. I, I'm using a wireless. Uh, I may need to run a cable to this thing. I shouldn't have to, but um, it cleared up. Okay. All right. So yeah, have a bank account. If you're going to do regular things as a team, have a bank account that's only for the team, and have you and your most trusted. Uh, ally or two most trusted allies within the team and the three of you are going to administer this thing together and that way the reason to do that is if you're regularly doing team stuff you don't want to be mixing your money with team money uh, not because you're going to be tempted to be dishonest or anything like that but because you can it's easy it, it invites mistakes right you, if you make an error on your spreadsheet to where oh I, I've done it I, I've I've done it I've uh like I, I put a number in the wrong column or something like that and I come back later and I'm like that ah, that doesn't I'm sure I remember him paying for such and so and then but then I go to look at my bank account and I it's just like my personal money I can't figure out which how much of that money is team money um, that's why you want to have a separate account and what you can do with that account is create a Venmo account uh, Zelle PayPal. All, whatever all the different payment methods that people on your team are going to use and link them all to that account. That way, when people are paying for events, they have an easy way to send money, which you can then transfer straight into that account. It never touches your money, uh, never gets mixed in. You don't accidentally spend it because you forgot that it was team money and then you have to come up with it out of your pocket or lose track of it or anything like that. Um, those things. And the th that's a big one too. The third thing is uh, kind of... Well, not really necessarily like a, a specific operational thing you should do, but don't let the, like the, the weight of organizing everything ruin your fun with your whole team thing that you're doing. Delegate responsibility. Don't try to do everything, right? Uh, have some guys willing to step up and take over. And I don't just mean help you like take over certain things. I have, I have awesome guys on my team and, um, I can have I can completely trust other other guys to fully handle certain aspects of what we're doing in a way that means I don't have to think about it any more than I would if I was just a player on somebody else's team, and that is a super important thing to do. If you try to do it all yourself, even if you if you if you're a control freak and you want to do it all yourself, don't um, because chasing people around for money and trying to convince everyone. Uh, of a certain way you want to do something, or even more importantly, uh, feeling like you, the weight of the decision making is on you for making sure that everyone's happy, is, is going to weigh you down and make you not enjoy it. Don't do that. You can't make everybody happy. You can't run every single thing. Uh, delegate. Um, is it worth it for traveling to pay for an admin person? Well, that's a good question. It depends on. Um, how big of an operation you're running. If you have, I don't know, if you got 12 guys and you're going to run one line in, a, in speedball events or like a, like X-ball events, no. If it's two, probably not. I would say, I mean, I, don't, I, don't, I can't tell you an exact answer, but it, I mean, you can certainly get big enough that I would, I would think about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it can be, 
um, that admin person can be someone on your team. It doesn't have to be an outside person, right? Um, it could be an outside person, but it doesn't have to be. It'd just be someone who you pay as a team. Like you have, to, if you're gonna get that big, you're gonna start needing to have dues. If if you have a big team, let's say you got 30 active players and like four lines, and uh, or and then also a group of 10 or 12 guys mixed among those, and they also like to go to big games. So you have a lot of team activities going on. If all those things are happening you should have someone who is handling logistics of, of those things. And it can be an outside person or someone on the team. And you should have dues that pay for things like that, uh, for sure. Um, that's a good question. Um, so, yeah, Joshua, that's a, that's a good point. Yeah, you can have a, a president, a VP. You can do that if you get big enough. We've only got like 11 guys right now. We haven't gotten that far. But we, we didn't even exist last May. We're not even quite a year old yet. And we're making big strides. You know, people come to the field we play at, and this was kind of our mission from the beginning. Um, people come to our field, and they see how much fun we're having. We don't yell at each other. That whole try-hard tournament scene where guys yell at each other and yell at refs and whatever, that is not us. We have a fun time. We're very inclusive. We see people walking in with gear, and we are all got our team shirts on, and we're down at the end of the, of the field getting ready to play. Uh, on the air ball field, we're the guys who like yell down to them like, "Hey, come play with us, come check it out." And, that, and we grow, we're growing quickly. So we may get to a point where we have enough people, and I'll revisit this topic in the future if we get to a point where our structure is bigger. Uh, if anybody ever wants to talk about that, for sure. Um, so yeah, all right. Th that's all I wanted to say about that. So keep those things in mind. The, separate the money. Keep a spreadsheet. Make sure everyone can see it, or at least the people who are responsible for it can see it. And don't try to do everything yourself, and don't try to make everybody happy yourself. Um, that's my advice for that. So let me go back up here. Uh, someone asked me about um, a marker. Um, high tops. I'm scrolling up here. I'm not seeing it. Somebody, yes, the Isle Man is nuts. A good friend of mine who lives in Louisville uh, raced there. Uh, a couple of times, three times. And I wanted to go so bad, you know, when I was a kid, it was my fantasy to try to qualify there one day. And um, when I finally started racing, uh, they scrapped the lightweight class. And I wasn't going to do it on anything light or faster than a lightweight bike because I like being alive. I'm just not at all interested in going 170 on public roads with stone walls on the side. So I didn't go. And my friend Jimmy did go. And it's, it's, um, it's crazy. Um... He's talking about my shirt, Isle of Man. It's a motorcycle race on public streets. Nutty. So, um, could somebody post in here? The, there was a question earlier. I'm scrolling and I'm not seeing it. Somebody asked about a marker. Like, was it worth it or something? Um, somebody post what that question was, if you can see it. I know, I know somebody here will remember what it was. Um... I'm scrolling and scrolling. Ross is a great place. Um, Terry Young, 52 game back in. I hope you're still here. Yeah, I'm 50. I'm gonna be 54 in in July. And uh, yeah, don't wear Terry Young if you're still here. Don't wear soccer cleats. Get some good cleats. Get some it's like trail running shoes. That's my recommendation. Um, Hey, I didn't see Tim was here. QT Paintball Tim. I don't know if you're still here. I know people are dropping off. So nice to see you. Uh, Lux X. Thank you, Josh. Yes, yes. Is the Lux X worth it? What are my thoughts on the new Lux? Um, so the Lux X is not their uh, best effort, in my opinion. I've made no secret. I always have to say this is like a disclaimer. I've made no secret of my general disdain for those companies, GOG, Smart, uh, Shocker Paintball, and, and DLX, all the same guys. Uh, I'm not going to, don't worry, I'm not going to bore you all that whole thing now. But, uh, but apart from that, the actual markers, um, you know, not great, frankly. I'm not sure how they get uh, such traction in the market, if I'm being honest. The Lux Ice, I to me, was the best thing that they've made by a pretty fair margin. The X is not particularly easy on paint. I have multiple friends who have them, and every one of them has had problems with them 
more than like I mean I got all right it's, as it just as it happened this is coincidence mostly but a bunch of guys on my teams all have 170s and I've had a bunch of 170s um and like the, there's there's one guy on my team who has a, a Lux X and he's had more problems with that thing than all the 170s put together and and excuse me in fact I mentioned I loaned out my 6 to a guy and guess what he was shooting yeah um a Lux and he was having issues. Now, that's not a representative sample, nor am I trying to say that every Lux on Earth is always having problems. I'm just saying they don't appear to be at the level of reliability of other markers. They just don't. Um, and they're not particularly easy on paint. I just don't think they're great. The ice is better. Uh, hey, Tim, glad, glad to see you. Um, and yeah, as far as a new Lux, I, you know, people keep saying that. Um, I'm not aware of any details about a new Lux. The only thing I know about it is people who post things like, what about the new Lux? As if they know about a new Lux. I have made, you know, Tim is very knowledgeable. Uh, that's QT Paintball you can see in here in this chat. Uh, way smarter than me, better looking too. And um, maybe he knows something about um, an, an upcoming Lux. With the uh, Amp, a shocker amp having come out recently uh, it's certainly possible that next on their list is to like revamp the x or or come out with an entirely new high end of some kind uh that would build on that um on on that sort of it's not really a platform but you know maybe that's their next step i i have heard nothing about it except for people asking me about it so um yeah i mean tim's a good person to ask ask um i'm gonna wait to see if he responds um, yeah, Joshua. You know, you mentioned that before. I'm, I, I know, I'm not trying to say that every single person who has a Lux or an amp has the worst problems, and they're all crap. It's nothing like that. Uh, you, you. I'm sure you've watched my review of the amp. Tim did a review of the amp, and he will tell you if he's still here. I think he is. That the, uh, you know, neither of us had a very good experience with the amp. It has. It's not just. Oh, this particular one had an issue. There's design problems. That doesn't mean that they're unusable or completely untenable as a marker. They just aren't great. They're, you know, the they're, they're, the the amp is hard on paint. It has uh, bad breach geometry and too high a bolt speed. Uh, they released a, an update for the bolt O-rings. Um, and their update was to put a fat bumper O-ring on the bolt so that it drags on the can in an effort to slow the bolt down. I mean, that's ridiculous. They're talking about a cob job. I mean, I don't, you know, <laughs> if it works, great, I guess. I mean, you know, whatever. I've heard people say that the stanchy soft hit bolt goes a long way toward aiding the paint handling. And that would make sense because the stock bolt is a hollow cord bolt, which means the ball can like sit back in that hole a little bit, which makes more room between the ball and the detents when it's sitting in the breech, which can allow it to move around and therefore allow the bolt to hit the ball on the way out versus push it. Whereas the stanchy soft tip bolt has a flat front with a soft rubber face, which by its design will hold the ball farther forward and therefore take up some space between the detents and the bolt face, thereby reducing the amount the ball can move and making it more likely that the ball will be pushed out instead of hit. So it makes sense that that would help for sure. Uh, maybe if you, ever, if you guys have paint handling with it, um, give it a shot. Um, standard next Lux is going to be the amp core and Lux X body. Yeah. See, I didn't know that Tim. So Tim says it's going to be the, that amp core in a, um, in a, uh, an X body. And, um, yeah, I mean, I guess I sure would like to see them revise it. Uh, Connor, I think Connor might, might've took, might've taken it off, but, uh, Connor mentioned to me that he pointed out uh, that the air orifice that is the air passage that supplies air to the for the forward motion of the bolt is larger on the amp core than it is on a gamma core. And the gamma core is, of course, what they copied, right? Now, that larger orifice would flow more air and, by definition, move the bolt faster. So we were kind of speculating that, you know, if they reduced that, instead of putting the fat O-ring on, if they come out with a new part that had a smaller orifice, that would slow the bolt down and maybe help paint handling. But they didn't do that. They said put a fat O-ring on and hope for the best. So, 
You know, it's funny. I'm not making this up. You can look yourself. If you look at, that's such a ridiculous repair that when they posted the, and I'm talking about Shocker Paintball now, they posted that update as a YouTube video to show you how to do it. And they immediately disabled the comments, <laughs> which I found to be hilarious. Like they didn't want to withstand the barrage of, are you kidding me? Comments in there. Um, but yeah, these are just my, this is just my take. Now I'm not trying to say that they're junk and like every one of them is a pile of trash. It's nothing like that. They're just the, the, the they, it, it, to me, there's a contrast there between the highest level of the nicest markers and the Lux X and the amp. I just don't think they, I don't think they're worth what they charge. And I don't feel like they're great values. Lots of people love them. They look really cool. If I'm being honest and I always am, I think they're the coolest looking paintball markers i love that look they look like like star trek phasers there's just they're really cool looking lux as i'm talking about um so yeah we'll, we'll see about that uh thank you very much um oh uh, who said somebody oh roy thanks for yeah thanks it's been a good like almost three weeks i think two and a half weeks or something since i did this and I love doing it, and I'm, I'm not going to do this just only this in place of real videos. I promise you, I've got videos coming. I've just had so much going on with work and preparing for this tournament. And there's just not enough hours in the day to go through and make the video. It takes so much longer to do the video, um, you know, like a review or whatever, than it does to do this. And I love that you guys come and hang out. It's, it's super cool. Um, faster bolt speed might mean better efficiency. Uh, yeah, it might. I mean, I, it, but yeah, it's possible for sure. Uh, the, the, the amp is efficient, uh, but I don't care how efficient my marker is. If it's a blender, you know, if I'm being honest, you know, um, and that doesn't seem to be a problem for gamma core markers, right? Like the one is the 170 as efficient as an amp? No, but it's plenty efficient. I mean, I carry, look at me, I'm a big fat bad guy. I can carry like a, a million tubes and, and have no problem with air in my, in my, more, my, uh, uh, skeleton air 80s i can shoot every pot i'm carrying and i carry so much paint like it breaks my straps i, I mean you, you know there's no problem with efficiency with the 170 so it doesn't seem like a good like a good uh trade-off and tim says him like i said tim's smarter than me um and he says it doesn't have equal better efficiency but but i don't think tim to be fair i don't know if that's exactly what joshua was saying that it, like i don't think he meant that literally the faster the bolt goes the more efficient it is i think what he meant was perhaps there's a design compromise which um resulted in both a higher bolt speed but also more efficiency and if they changed that design parameter maybe it would have sold the bolt speed down but also changed the efficiency and if that's completely malarkey and that's what you mean then that's okay but um yeah um i had a guy call the shop yeah and you know a lot of people are buying amps i mean people like them like i said i'm not trying to be a hater i just you guys like coming to this this channel and to tim's qt paintball channel because we don't you know, like a lot of channels in the course, it's just, you know, this is understandable, right? Channels done by folks who are selling things. I mean, I do, you know, I buy and sell used stuff some a little bit, not very much anymore. But channels that are done by people selling things, they're not going to, you know, you can't expect them. There's no reasonable expectation, I guess, that someone's going to get a new market, a new marker in, which they ostensibly are going to sell hundreds of, and then make a video where they slag the thing. I mean, it's just not reasonable to expect that. So our mission, both of us, is to provide our honest impressions of what we see and what we don't see in gear, whether it's markers or whatever it is we're talking about. And... Um, and my honest impression I gave it in that video, um, it, it felt great to, to, to shoot. Um, there was a lot about it that I thought was good, but overall execution was just poor. And the thing's $900. I mean, if I paid 500 for that thing and then had the experience I had when I, when I tested them out, I would have been disappointed. Never mind 900 So that's just my take about it. Um, my experience with the Prime XTS, I have... I don't have one right now. I had, uh, actually, let me back up. Not an XTS. I had an original Prime previously that I put, uh, I bought it with, I'm trying to remember exactly. I don't remember the exact number. It was, it had almost 100,000 shots on it. 
um, and I used it for last summer for, for, I don't know, man, I play almost every weekend and I used it for probably three months straight. Um, and I shoot probably two cases a day and, uh, the thing was absolutely stone hammer reliable. I have friends who have them who have uh, hundreds of thousands of shots on primes and they're absolutely stone hammer reliable. Um, I will now the question about, um, the markers, I think, are excellent, period. There's very little I don't like about any of them, and not just the Prime either. The Prime XTS is also nice. Um, the Clone 5 Infinity, I actually prefer the Clone 5 Infinity. It is mostly mechanically the same as a, a Prime, but I prefer the, both the looks of it and the ergonomics, uh, frankly, to the Primes. And that's just a personal choice thing. It's not a performance thing, but they're all great. But... I feel, no, I did not pre-order an XDR. I, I, I'm working on having, you know, in fact, I've worked on this for you too and you don't even know, Tim. Um, uh, I believe that I'm going to be able to have one of those sent to me to do a review. Uh, and I will, And my plan is for us to, kind of, I, I meant to talk to you about this but since you're asking me. My plan is for us to both review the same marker. And um, just tonight, literally, I heard this. I'll tell you about it offline, but we had a little monkey wrench, like a stick in the spokes with regard to that. I'm not sure it's going to happen now, but I did not pre-order one. But So I want to talk for a second about MacDev, though. I feel like I'm, I'm at a point now with MacDev that I feel like, and this is sad for me, frankly, because uh, I kind of like to be a cheerleader. The markers are excellent. Uh, frankly, I would go so far as to say beyond reproach. I mean, they're easy on paint. They're efficient. I love the shot. Uh, they're the machining and the build quality is amazing. The, like, there is no, there are no markers in paintball that are built as nicely and are just as high end to feel as Mac Devs. And even it doesn't, not just the high ends. The Clone Five Infinity or all the all those Clone Fives, the current ones, Clone Five Infinity, has a feel about it that many uh, guns that are markers, many markers that are that are you know double the price don't have i mean they just feel so good they're so nice and here's the butt uh in america anyway i can't speak to what it's like in europe i know that I, I keep hearing that they're very popular in europe and maybe they have a full support structure in europe um i always say this phrase i always am if i'm being honest they are struggling in uh in our market here to establish a functional, reliable distribution and service and parts availability system. Whether that system would be a well-maintained website where you can go and get real prices on things and actually buy them and order them, or whether it's availability of things. And I don't know how much of this is because of COVID and how much of it is not. Uh, judging from what I've known, that I'm not really at liberty to talk about a bunch of stuff, and I, I don't mean like I'm some kind of big industry insider. I just have a buddy who who knows, and I, I'm not trying to hang anybody out to dry. Um, that's all. But um, it's not. Just, I'm telling you, it's not just because of, because of COVID. Um, you, you look on the website, and you can't trust the inventory that says on the website what's available and what's not. Um, when you go on, for example. Um, Planet Eclipse has a tech, tech Hub Facebook page. You ask questions on there and they get a little overwhelmed. Does it take a day or two for your questions to show up sometimes? Yeah. But they answer 100% of them. Right? With comprehensive answers supplied by the very, like the, the engineers who designed the markers. No one knows more about Planet Eclipse markers than the people answering those questions. You are getting the best advice you can get all the time on that website. Um, I just I can just randomly list off like all these companies I deal with die when I call not only do we have accessibility directly to Billy Wing who partially engineered their stuff and clearly nobody knows how to work on those markers more than he does but apart from that even when you when I call die because I have an issue with a marker I need to ask a question about the person who answers the phone is a knowledgeable tech who can immediately help me in real time with whatever my question is with knowledgeable, excellent advice and service. Uh, I've had the same experience with Shocker Paintball, and I'm trying to be fair because, you know, I told you I don't like those companies. It's nothing to do with that. They, I've called there. There's a guy named Craig 
who uh, answers the phone or answers. I didn't call there. I think it was actually emails. And uh, I get I got prompt responses mostly. Uh, good service. Um, Immortal Air. I sent an, an email for Immortal Air uh, like on a Saturday night at 10 o'clock at night. Not because I'm trying to get somebody at that time. I just I was like I was messing with stuff down here, and I'm like, oh well, I'm rebuilding this reg, and I don't have the spring pack I thought I had, and I had some questions, so I fired off an email. The dude replied to me like 15 minutes later on a Saturday night with a comprehensive, super informative response with pictures and an offer to send me free stuff on a Saturday night, in the middle of the night. The guy doesn't know me from Adam, right? And that's the kind of service I'm getting there, and I can go on and on. You're seeing the point. I've messaged people within the tech uh, part of MacDev uh, and never to this day had a response. That doesn't mean I've never gotten a response. I'm saying that I have sent messages and that just disappeared into the ether. Uh, I've had people tell me, oh, send a message to this guy and that's how you get the answer. So I post on in the MacDev Facebook group and tag them, nothing. I sent a PM on, on Facebook, nothing. Um, yeah, so... You know, people ask a lot. People who like the markers to ha ask all the time, why can't, why aren't they more popular? Why don't people? Well, this is why. This is why they don't serve, they don't succeed in this market. It's not because the markers aren't aren't good. It's because of all the other stuff. Um, I chatted with someone the other day. Now I bought a brand new clone. The clones are discontinued, by the way. There's like a I think there's a dealer or two that maybe has a few clone five infinities left in stock, but they're gone. MacDev is not going to make more. They don't have any more in inventory. They're gone. The XDR is replacing it. Um, the price on the website was $800 for those, and they put them on sale for $700. But if you knew who to call, you can get one for $550, and plenty of people did. But I saw uh, just the other day, someone posted on Facebook somewhere, and I was chatting with him. He had a question about his clone. He paid the full freight on the, on the website, $800 for a clone because he, he didn't know about doing that. And that's terrible. You can't run a business that way. When when he found out that if he just knew that he should have posted up on Facebook about buying a clone, he could have paid $250 less for his clone. When he found that out, he was he I mean, he's never going to buy a MacDev again, right? Not new anyway. And that th these are terrible problems. These are the problems that are going to be the downfall of MacDev at least in America. Like I said, I don't know what's going on in Europe, but um if they don't figure out, I keep hearing that they're dedicated to fixing it, and I keep not seeing any, ev ev any evidence of it being any better. So if they don't come up with a way to address these kinds of issues, have real support, um, and you know me, like I chat on Facebook all the time, like I talk to everybody, I know, not personally, I'm like I'm some kind of industry big shot, I'm just a loud mouth and I'm on Facebook all the time, so I get to meet people. And through that, I know of a bunch of people I, to, to chat up in order to try to get stuff, and it took me like weeks and weeks to get an answer to my simple prime firmware upgrade question and ended up actually, I don't know if he's still here or not, but Connor, who doesn't even work at MacDev, had to help me because he actually has more inside track than I do, certainly, on who he knows there. And he was able to figure out or he knew who to call or whatever to, um, to help with that. And I was able to get a firmware update. But... Like, why can't I just go to the website and click on support, downloads, firmware update, boom, and get the, and get the, get it? Like, it was, and you can now, but I'm saying at that point, it wasn't current. It was like a multi-version, old version. So, yeah, I'm kind of ranting by now. But you get that, you know, so the markers are great. And I have progressed to a point where I just can't recommend them um, for these problems, which sucks. Because I think the XDR might be something special. I hear they're going to do a pop-it maybe at some point. That's going to be awesome, maybe. Um... You know, so, I mean, if they can't take care of this stuff, who knows? So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about that. Um, yeah, you know, I agree with you, Joshua, as far as the pop-it market and wanting something new. And that, that, that Intimidator, they, that Field 1 might come out with, that might be something pretty neat. Um, yeah, you never know. That, that would be cool. Um, I don't know how badly development dollars are strained. But and of course I know they just did the uh, LV16 right, and you know a lot of people criticize the LV16 exactly the same as the previous LV. They just they updated it in order to be able to use a currently available and serviceable solenoid versus the previous one. That's the only difference. Like functionally, it's the same. Ergonomically, it's the same. All that. 
And um, so I know they just did that. And uh, with COVID and whatnot, development dollars are probably scarce. Uh, so I don't know if an LV2 is like in any kind of, I'm sure it's in a roadmap somewhere deep within Planet Eclipse. Like someone, it's not like they don't know that people want one. But man, how cool would it be to see a, uh, a complete a modern designed hoseless L, like LV evolution, right? A, a fully modernized LV. That would be super cool. And I promise you, I would own one personally, not just to review either. Um, if they didn't have that weird ergo thing for me, I'd have one now. I think they're really fun to shoot. They're, su they're super cool. Excuse me. I love the feel of them. But it's one of the rare things. Like, I always talk about ergonomics, how, you know, when I'm sitting around looking at something, I can, like, nitpick and find things I don't like. But when I'm playing, I don't notice those things. That, the way the front grip is on those particular markers, I do notice that when I'm playing. Like, it, every time I switch hands or grab it, it annoys me. And um, that's why I don't have one. But they're super cool, and I'd love to see them come up with a, with a new one. So, we'll see. Roy, thank you. I appreciate you guys coming. Oh, I almost forgot. Let me see your other quotes. Um, frosty kibbles thank you um, yeah I do my best for sure um, yeah you know Jack says that and of course we don't really know where it's expensive right to make an all new marker it's expensive oh, really expensive um, and I don't know the uh, you know Tim, yeah, this is what I was about to say about the, the how expensive is it to make a new architecture for that. On the one hand, I'm with you, um, Tim, but on the other hand, like Alien did it ages ago, right? Um, the torque is hoseless. Um, it doesn't seem impossible. Like I get that it's that it's uh, difficult, but and and I guess what I mean is that even if we're I'm not talking about adapting the current LV. I'm talking about a clean sheet design. Um, it's hard for me to imagine that anybody's selling more markers than Planet Eclipse. So if anybody could do it, it would be them. Um, so yeah, but I don't know anything about their market numbers or sales numbers. Uh, the LV certainly seems popular and people love them, but does that translate into, ma into huge sales to where it's worth it? You know, I guess uh, I guess Jack Wood says no. So, um, my your, Porter, my your rants are why I'm here. Good. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad somebody enjoys them. I mean, there's a few people here, so that's cool. Um, so check out what I got. I told you I was gonna get some swag. Airtime paintball mafia stickers. It's the tip of the iceberg, friends. The tip of the iceberg. This is all I have right now. If you want some Airtime Paintball Mafia stickers, I would like you to send... Here, I'm going to put this in here. Uh, airtime. AirtimePaintballGmail.com email me your name and address and I will mail you two of these stickers I got I have two different packages of them bigger and small uh, you can actually put in there do you want big or small or one each or two big ones whatever there should be you know it's not like I have very many fans I'm sure there's enough in here to, to, to do whatever whatever you guys want uh, I'll send I'll mail you two and what I'm gonna do people always offer me suggestions for what I'm gonna do with uh, the next giveaway. And what I'm going to do with the next giveaway is um, I'm not sure what I'm going to give away, but it's going to be something good, better than a barrel or a jersey. It'll be something better than that. And I want to see photos of your Airtime Paintball Mafia stickers on your gear, whether it's on your hopper, be creative, on your car, um, wherever, it is, wherever it is you're going to put them. I want to see photos, and you can email them to that same address or post them on uh, Facebook on our group. Do that. Do that. Post them on the Airtime Paintball group. And I was going to mention that. Um, the uh, Airtime Paintball page is defunct. It wasn't working. I don't do enough volume to, to bother with like a business page, so to speak. So I scrapped it, and I have a Facebook group 
called Airtime Paintball Mafia. Go to Facebook and search Airtime Paintball Mafia and join that group, please. Um, as And uh, post in there pictures of your Airtime Paintball decals on stuff. And what I'll do is I'm going to print out one of each of the pictures that you do. And um, I'm going to uh, make a drawing. And I, well, I won't print out the pictures. That's kind of dumb. I'll probably number them and I'll make a drawing. Um, and I'm going to give something good away. I haven't decided what yet. I've got some regulators, tank regulators. Um, I, I mentioned it's going to be better than a barrel. It is going to be better than a barrel. But maybe it'll be a barrel kit. I have an example here of almost every barrel kit that exists and some that you can't even buy anymore for my barrel video. I have like 6 million barrels. Maybe I'll give away a barrel kit. Uh, maybe I'll give away a tank regulator. Got some other stuff. Um, that's right. Jimmy Hoffa's location. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, Tim, make with the videos. I haven't made a review video in a while either. But uh, like I said, we need guys like Tim. I'm here to rant and uh, carry on and be enthusiastic and just give my sort of opinions about stuff. Tim is the guy you need when you want to understand the underpinnings of how stuff works. Uh, nobody does videos in that way as well as Tim does with a patient explanation of bolt systems. We talked about the amp earlier. If you want to understand, you know, people always blab like me, right? They blab about, oh, the amp core is the copy of the gamma core. Well, if you want to learn about that and have an educated opinion, look at QT Paintball's YouTube channel. He has a video where he breaks down in the video with like overhead video close-up stuff of those cores and explains, uh, you know, the, the details of the amp core. Very cool. Um, so yeah, check out that check out that channel for sure. Um, I, I'm gonna probably wrap it up here. It's been geez, an hour and a half. You guys hung out with me for an hour and a half. You're you're amazingly cool. Um, so what do I want to review? I appreciate that, Joshua. And you know what? I a bunch of you guys have regularly offered me markers to review, and I can't tell you how much that support means to me. It's it's unbelievably cool. That people would do that. And for those of you who don't know, I, I mentioned this briefly. Maybe you all haven't watched this. Um, the my fourth video. So the dude who makes our team jerseys, that's um, Anthony Leodoro, Ugly Paintball. He messaged me one day. And keep in mind, I don't know. I don't. I only know Anthony from my dealings with the jerseys. I've never met him in person. We don't know each other personally, except for our dealings with jerseys and. And headbands and such, right? So he messaged me like, "Hey, uh, you know your videos." Um, my Facebook in the chat. It's the the group is search for that and uh, airtime paintball mafia uh, in the thing. So, like I said, I don't know him. So he goes, "Hey, have you, did, have you done a video on your on the force?" And I said, "No, I haven't had a force yet." And he said, "Okay, well." I'm thinking about buying one. I think I'll call up and order one right now. And I'll have them ship it right to you so you can do a video. And then you can send it to me. What do you think about that? And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. And he did exactly that. He called up Force the next morning, talked to Yosh Rao on the phone personally, ordered up a Force, explained what he was doing so he knew it wasn't shenanigans that he was shipping it someplace random, right? Um, they shipped it directly to me brand new. And he let me break it down, take it apart, shoot it. He never even saw it yet. And those are expensive, like $1,500, $1,600. He just had it shipped directly to me new and let me abuse it and make a video out of it before he even ever even saw the thing. Like, how cool is that? That's that's Anthony at Ugly Paintball. You need jerseys. He got joggers there, cool headbands for not expensive. Um, check him out for sure, Ugly Paintball. Um yeah, so that thing about guns, Joshua, I appreciate that. I don't, I'm not sure what I'm doing yet, uh, for sure. Uh, I was about to do, I have never done an M3 Plus video, and I always mention, when people ask me what, what are the best markers, I always say stuff like, oh, I think the you can make an argument that the M3 Plus is, is the best marker. And yeah, I haven't done a video on one. Well, I was going to do on mine, but you, somebody mentioned early in the video, my screen went dim. And uh, so I'm looking for a board, and I'm going to replace that. Um, that so it's a little screen, little screen will be bright again. Now that that marker, it's not a criticism. The screen went dim. That thing's been through the ringer. That marker is an actual Columbus level. They're a pro NXL team. It is one of their actual team guns that one of the guys, their back player, used or one of their back players, whatever, used for two seasons in NXL play. So it is used with a capital U, right? Um, 
it's lived a hard, it's in great shape. He took super good care of it, but it's lived a hard life. Literally, the life of a professional paintball player. And um, by no means is it a criticism that the screen went dim on it. I mean, that thing is, has been torture tested in a way that almost no markers ever are. So, not a criticism, but the fact is, screen's dim. So, I need to fix that before I do uh, the review. Um, have I ever done Marco Tro shooting videos? Um, you know what? I haven't. And you're right. You know what? If you're not good at it, it it is best left to experts. And maybe, Tim, if you're still here, you should do some of those. Um, I'm good at marker troubleshooting, um, but mostly it's because my lifetime of being a gearhead and being a computer guy for a living has taught me good troubleshooting methodology. It's not because I'm a paintball marker expert. So I probably go through a lot of steps that people are like, you're, that's stupid. That It can't be that. Why are you doing that? But because I don't know, I have to go through a sort of a linear progression of troubleshooting steps because I might not know the ins and outs of the way a particular core routes air, for example. So I might be checking something that is couldn't be the problem that I'm trying to diagnose. I don't know that. Um, so I'm, I, I wouldn't think that I would be the person to be teaching people how to, how to work on markers. I, I do all, all my own stuff, all the all guys in my team, not all of them, but a few guys in the team regularly send me stuff. I've never found anything I can't fix. But there's a difference between being able to do that and being the kind of expert who can teach someone the right way to do something. And that's something maybe Tim could do. Um, you should consider that, Tim, um, uh, to do that. Um, so a real quick tuning, yeah, you know what I uh, bacon bot M twos are very cool. Um, they're you know, it's funny that people have a confusion about the, you know, the M two because it has that big screen on the side and the ultralight frame. The, the M two and the M three appear very related, and they're told they're really not. The DM fourteen, or excuse me, let me say the DM fifteen die gun, die marker, die marker, DM-15 marker, is really just a DM-14 with slightly different milling, a shorter feed neck, and a billy wing bolt comes stock, whereas it was an option in the DM-14. The M-2 is just a fancy DM-15 with a giant screen. Mechanically, it's the same marker. The M-3 is a completely soup to nuts new marker, but uses the same screen and ultralight frame. Uh, so that's a little bit confusing. There's the DM15 is much more related to an M2 than an M2 is to an M3. They're, it's a completely new marker, the M3, um, and the M2 does to circle back the reason I said this is that the M2 does use an LPR. The M3 design eliminates the LPR, which is great for reliability. Um, but if you like to tinker and tune and change the feel of things, uh, the M2s are super fun. Um, and I, I don't wear glasses when I play. They're only reading glasses. So, no, I don't, have to, I don't have to wear glasses when I play. I have teammates who do. I think, actually, I think he just got contacts. You didn't have to worry about it anymore. But he was wearing an EVS goggle with glasses before. And he seemed to think that was okay. Um, lube your bolt. Yes, Joshua. That's an expert, expert advice. Maintain your markers for sure. Um, QT panel. Congratulations on getting a new house. Can't wait to hear about it. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm a man. I don't know about being the man. But, um, yeah, so regarding tuning in general, if you have a marker that is a relatively modern marker, uh, you know, to be frank, tuning is a pretty overrated activity in the current age. Um, most of the time, people tune by changing settings when they really don't have any understanding of what that particular parameter uh, actually impacts when you change it. They just like monkey with it. Oh, less dwell means this or more dwell means that or I'll just do this or that. And they really don't have any idea what they're doing. And more often than not, uh, I, they just change them until they keep monkeying around until all the different settings have migrated so far from the default settings the thing starts being unreliable and then they have problems. So my recommendation is to not tune. Here, here's an example. This is a very simple one. Uh, GO4 or CS1, CS1.5, CSR, GO4, all mechanically the same gun, right? All They're the same. 
they all have the SFR. That's the uh, solid flow restrictor. That's the little twisty knob deal on the side of the trigger frame. And you can turn it to 12 o'clock and that vents the least amount of air out, meaning the most possible air is what moves the bolt back and forth. So it makes it a little bit snappier and, and faster bolt speed. Then when you start backing it toward the three o'clock position, you start venting more air, which slows down the bolt, makes it feel softer. That adjustment, it says right in the manual, and you can ask on the Planet Eclipse tech sites, is meant to be a summer adjustment. If it's not hot out pretty much, well, not hot, but whatever. If it's not warm, I don't know if there's a defined temperature. I'm going to say over 70. If it's not over 70, your SFR shouldn't be uh, anything but 12 o'clock, right? Um, I regularly see people at the field have bolt stick and uh, first shot drop-off issues with uh, IV core markers and like just a couple weeks ago, we were out playing. It was like in the high 40s in the morning. And the guy's like, I can't get my, my CS1 to work. And he shows it to me. And the SFR is at 3 o'clock. It's like all the way down. So I just grabbed it. I turned it all at 12 o'clock and pulled the trigger. And boom, it works fine, right? Like, don't monkey with stuff if you don't understand it. That's the point of my tuning lecture. Um, if you're talking about board settings, uh, resetting to the factory default is the way. Except, now I'm going to say this because you have your M2. Don't do that. The, there's profiles, right? The default, there's a little, little known trivia for you. The default profile on the M2 is incorrect. It has incorrect dwell. And I don't know the numbers. I, I can't tell you the right number. I don't remember it. Um, but when you put the, when you load the default profile because you think you're resetting it to the factory defaults and it will work, you're not getting the default settings you're getting the default profile that got put in and it doesn't have the right dwell. Um, it's too low, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure it's too low. Um, so if you have an M2, um, yeah, keep that in mind. I learned that. I, I didn't know that until I, I, uh, I bought one used la a year ago and uh, it didn't, the thing didn't work. And when, I'm, when I have a marker that doesn't work, like I'm telling you guys, the very first thing I do is reset the factory factory default in every way um, so that my baseline should work. And then if it still doesn't work, then I've got to fix something. And I can't even tell you the hugely giant per percentage of the time that just going back to factory settings fixes it. Um, but it didn't in that case because I didn't understand the thing about the default profile. So uh, that's a thing. Um, <laughs> Breach, Dave. Yeah, thanks. Um, so yeah, I think I've got, um, attach your pod pack to a Molly vest. Yeah. You know, bacon bot. I'm, I, I don't, I've never played with those. I know you're talking about the Molly tack vest. Um, that's like a military style vest where you can put accessories on it and whatnot. Uh, and I've never, I've never done that. I, I apologize. I don't have any advice for you. Um, uh, so, uh, best value pack harness review. Um, I can, yeah, I'm going to do a soft, uh, a soft gear review or a soft goods video at some point. Um, if you guys can, but there's still 40 people here. You can, uh, I can tell you real quick. I, I recently bought cause I'm a big guy, right? Um, I kind of wanted a modern yeah, podcast or fat people. You're on it, buddy. You are on the live stream for fat people. You're on it right now. Um, the uh, I wanted a modern six across pack like my old APP pack that I was still using until last month, <laughs> right? I still might use it more. Um, and I bought a social paintball six plus nine pack, um, and it's 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 very nice. It's not a particular bargain at seventy dollars, but it's made very well. I only needed a short belt extension. I'm using suspenders with it because I'm a, I have the bad. Um, combo being a fat guy with no ass and that's that what happens is when you wear your pack weight down on your hips the way most people do as soon as the weight of paint pulls it down at all you have no butt to hold it up and it falls off which means you have to wear it high which looks ridiculous and is not comfortable um so i use suspenders to put so i can locate it in the right place but it won't fall off because i don't have a butt um yeah six plus nine that's what it is um and um, yeah, it's, it's a great pack. It's like a modern style vertical job. Horizontal packs versus vertical. Um, 
Real, the vertical design it's better, frankly. That's old school. He's talking about horizontal packs where the pods go in this way. Uh, the problem with horizontal packs is that it's difficult to get them to work well um, without hanging them too low. If you have more than um, like more than four, right? Even if you have six, the high one is so high that it's hard to reach it. Not maybe not if you're standing, but if you're in a like in a smaller bunker hiding down, it's hard to get to the high one unless you wear it really low. And if you wear it really low, you kick your tubes or sit on them. Um, that's why that's why all the modern stuff is vertical, uh, not horizontal. Um, so in when I'm normally playing my suspenders, I um, I wear them. Oh, I wear, I put them put the pack on last because in tournament rules you can't have your jersey over your pack over your belt. So I just wear it over. All the other times I wear I have a t-shirt on and I wear my pack and then I put my jersey over it because the suspenders look nerdy. Um, so um, you caught my first accidental stream trying to get back here, Terry. Uh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, but I wanted to say real quick, the bargain pack thing. I think I have it right here. I did a video on this. Uh, oh, it's not in here. What did I do with that pack? Uh, man, I would have bet a dollar it was in here. Not in here. Okay, well, I, maybe I loaned it to somebody. Um, the price has gone up a little bit. I think they might be $45 right now. They were like $35 or $40. Disruptive Paintball has an awesome... Uh, convertible pack it's convertible between strapped or strapless very high quality very heavy duty uh, and it's like a four plus five maybe uh, and like I said it's like it used to be 30 35 dollars or something and I think it might be 43 dollars now or something but it is by far the best value um, and it works for big guys I stock strap without an extension easily gets all the way around me and I'm immense so um, it fits anybody. Uh, it's extremely high quality. That's destructive, dis disruptive paintball. Just Google it um, and find their paintball page and look for packs. They have a lot of great values. They have jerseys that are so cheap they're like virtually free. And they're, excuse me, they're super nice jerseys. Um, they have barrels that are nice. I've got a disruptive barrel kit. Like I said, I've got every barrel kit almost for that video I've been working on forever. The Disruptive Death Touch Multi-Back Barrel Kit is $145, I believe, and extra tips of different colors are $15 each. Super good value. Um, better value, frankly, if, out of all of these, I'd rather have the Disruptive, frankly. Um, it's a, the case is kind of big, but yeah, anyway. Um, try that. T4, review on the Strapless Breakout Virtue Pack. Um, yeah, you know, I don't do a ton of those reviews, and the reason for that is because of my shape. I don't believe that my take on how good a pack is is, like, credible or useful for a normally built paintball guy. Like, you don't, like, you're, most of you guys don't care what a giant, fat, old guy likes or doesn't like about a pack, um, you know, when you're wearing it. I don't, I don't feel like my opinion is very good or very useful, and that's why I don't, I haven't done a lot of those. Um, I think there might be a uh, Paintball Room My Life review of that pack. Oh, excuse me. Um, a better way to, pill, to fill caddies. Yeah. Um, a better way to fill pods. Yes, there is one. Look on Matrix Paintball. Paul, that's a Paul Figueredo's uh, webpage, Matrix Paintball Gear. He has a super cool table mounted pod filling device that I'm going to order. I tried to order one a few weeks ago and he was so busy I ended up we missed each other chatting. I haven't talked to him. But yeah, look at Matrix Paintball and look for the pod filler thing. It's like a big a big thing you fill with paint with a spring loaded door on the bottom and you shove pods under it. It's super cool. Uh get one of those. Do I wear body armor in a giant game? You know <laughs> This is kind of embarrassing. I saw, I saw a question earlier. When did I start playing paintball? I started playing paintball in the early 90s. And I played for a long time, uh, about 10 years. And then I didn't play for a long time until my son got me back into it a while back. Out of all that time, I've never been to a big game. Ever. I re completely ridiculous, I know, but I've never done it. Um, I don't wear body armor. I wear knee pads. Uh, and that's it. I don't wear I don't wear elbow pads or, or anything else. I don't do a lot of diving, um, so I don't do that. It's funny we're talking about that because the, the layout of the tournament we're playing in next week, 
actually has a, a wedge, which is a pretty big square bunker that is only about 40 feet from directly in front of the start box. And one of our plays may have me running and diving into that. Well, most people don't have to dive, but I'm so slow that if I want to get there on the break, I'm going to have to dive. So I may be wearing an arm patch for the tournament because I might be diving into that thing. And if I am, I hope somebody has video because that will be entertaining for you guys um, to have video of me diving into something. That should be a comedy a comedy gold mine. Um, yeah, well, if you are giant fat guys, then you would care about what pack I would want. And I just told you that disruptive pack is the one you want. Um, so Josh Hogan, you working the hot and cold daily. Oh yeah. You know, my dad was a lifetime commercial HVAC guy. He ran the physical plant at UMass in Massachusetts. Um, yeah, you know what? Uh, the as far as gear that breathes in the heat, I'm all about that because, of course, obviously, like I keep mentioning now, I'm like a fat sweat hog, and I live in Tennessee. It gets hot here a lot in the summer, and um, so hot that I kind of call it winter. Like the mid the middle of summer, like when it's late summer or like August, whatever, that might as well be like three feet of snow on the ground to me because when it's 103 and humid, I'm not playing paintball. <laughs> you know, it might as well be snowing outside because I'm not doing it. Uh, but I, uh, as far as gear that breathes, yeah, the pads are kind of rough. I, I, I don't, I don't have an answer for pads that are cool. I don't think you can have both really. Um, for pants, I, my favorite ones are GI race 2.0. Uh, I love those things. There's, there, there's no such, they're, 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 they're very durable and they're very comfortable. And it's like, you, it, you can't hardly feel you're wearing pants. They breathe, they have really big, like thin, stretchy, breathable sections in them. They're super nice that way. Dive 50 snake off break. Not yet. I'm working on getting in better shape. I have been losing weight. Uh, and I'm a lot more mobile than I was a year ago, which is not saying much because I was like completely a fire hydrant before. Now I'm like a slightly flexible fire hydrant. But I'm getting better. Well, I promise you, I'm going to say this right now. Someday I will actually go all the way to the snake on the break. I will. I'm going to do it someday. It's my goal to get in good enough shape that I'm going to try that. Um, rib protection is nice. Yeah, I guess if you're diving around a lot, rib protection is good. But like I said, I you know I'm not Mr. Divey, so I don't you know. And it's so hot out. When I play in the summer, a lot of times I wear shorts and a t-shirt and knee pads. Um, so that way, if I just play, if I'm playing on my knees, I don't want to like you know cut up my knees or whatever. Even on turf, that's like abrasive and annoying. So I, I always wear knee pads. But in summertime, uh, we don't. Have, I don't have a lot of woods options here, so I'm not playing in the woods very much. That, that's why I'm saying I wear shorts and a t-shirt. I wouldn't wear shorts and a t-shirt in the woods here because you get ticks. But um, yeah, like a speedball, I wear uh, yeah shorts and a t-shirt. So um, I don't wear gloves either. I have some that are like really tacky palms that I cut the fingers off of. So that when it's really raining a lot and things are slippery, I can still grab stuff. But uh, apart from that, uh, I don't. I don't wear gloves. Um, yeah, or a helmet, <laughs> Tim. <laughs> yeah, I don't wear a helmet either. Um, but um, one thing I, I used to wear, I'll tell you something. This was my favorite gloves when I back in the day, like a hundred years ago, when I was regularly playing all those years ago. Back then. Uh, most of what we played was in the woods. Like all tournaments were in the woods. I played lots of woods ball. And when I played woods ball, I did wear gloves. And the and I still think these are a great option today is um, baseball batting gloves. They are very, very thin leather with Velcro. And they have like a little mini sweatband on the back. You can't, if you get the right size, you can't even really feel you're wearing gloves. They're so thin that you can still... Uh, you like manipulate your fingers like this, like a, say a thumb screw on your feed neck, for example, or buttons on your marker. But uh, they take a little bit of sting out from, not a lot, because they're so thin. But they give you good grip. They definitely protect your hands from being in the woods, like, you know, on thorns. Well, I don't know how much they protect you from, from sharp thorns. But you know what I mean, like sticks and, and whatever. Like, you definitely have a layer of protection there, for sure. And they're not hugely expensive. And they have them on Amazon now. We didn't have Amazon back then, of course. We barely had electricity back when I played then. But you can get them on Amazon now for pretty cheap. Or you can stop at your local sporting goods store. It's spring right now, so you can, they have baseball um, 
baseball gear out and you can get pairs of batting gloves also football receiver gloves are pretty good except they have rubber palms that are like super extra tacky and i've tried those and i didn't like the way they felt when i was holding my marker so i i would go with baseball ones but it's up to you but that's a thought uh give, maybe give those a, some thought um for for playing um Playing paintball to lose weight. Um, well, let's be honest. Paintball is not a cardio-supported activity, right? You're not constantly running. You can, even if you even if you move a lot, there's no sustained high high heart rate, which is what you need for cardio, which is what you need to increase your cardiovascular fitness, which is supportive of weight loss, right? It's not necessarily what you need to lose weight, but it's part of becoming more fit. Um, so it's not great in that way. However, if you have a very sedentary lifestyle like I did, and all you do is sit around and use your computer, and you just don't even move or do anything, it's an excellent way to get out and move around and like just get moving a little. Any Anybody will tell you, that anybody who knows anything about exercise or fitness, that any amount of getting out and moving is better than less. Right, and even if it's incremental, it's much better to go out and play paintball than it is to not, frankly. Um, and it might motivate you when you see how hard it is for you to make it to bunkers um, because you're overweight and you want to be in better shape. It might help motivate you. It certainly has for me. Uh, it might help motivate you to, to get into better shape and be healthy. And at my age, you know, when I talk about being in better shape, don't don't get me wrong. I am never. I mean, look at me. I'm a giant fat guy. I am in no way preaching about fitness or weight loss or anything like that. But I am diabetic, and I wasn't born with it. I call it the fat guy award. I earned it by eating quarter pounders all the time or whatever, right? And um, now I met, and I smoked. I used to smoke. I quit in June of 2017. And my point is that it, became, it becomes apparent. Oh, by the way, and I also nearly had a, uh, I almost nearly died of a heart attack. Um, in 2016 and uh, I ended up having a stent installed in my heart at 46 years old or 47 whatever I was in that year 2001, 5, 48 whatever, whatever it was um, and that has motivated me to finally do something about being healthier and that's what I'm talking about when it comes to weight and exercise and all that and if you're younger than I am, you're talking about being a fat guy. Um, it, doesn't, well, it doesn't matter if you're younger or older or whatever. I urge you to do it. But especially especially if you're younger, uh, I promise you, if your 54-year-old self could go back to your 35-year-old self, you would beat that guy senseless until he agreed to exercise and get into shape. Because the older you get, I mean, I, I'm, t I'm not exaggerating when I tell you I'm going to tell you this. I know a couple of guys have commented. There's a couple of guys who are joking, calling themselves fat guys on here. So I'm just going to waste your time and tell you this for real quick. Like you're not wasting time already, right? Um, when I had my heart problem, I was on a motorcycle trip with my dad. And I had what I thought was very bad heartburn. You probably heard that story. Uh, we walked to dinner one day. And, it, and the, the route we took to dinner was like down a bunch of blocks. And it was like a pretty gradual downhill walk. And then we walked out to like the side, like, like a river. And we walked on the riverbank. And then when we went up back to where our hotel was, we, we that like four block walk that was a gradual downslope, we recovered all that elevation in one block of up. So it was really steep. And when I walked up that hill, when I got to the top, I was. I thought I was going to die of a heart attack. My, my, I mean, like, like it felt like you've heard this. People say this, right? It felt like it was an elephant on my chest. I could barely breathe, um, like an idiot. I still didn't think it was a heart attack. I didn't go to the doctor, but I, I didn't get any sicker than that. So I recovered and it was fine. I finished my motorcycle trip, and uh, I went to. I did go to the doctor right after that, and the doctor gave me an EKG. And they have computerized ones now where they have like a diagnostic result. It doesn't just show your heartbeat and they have to figure it out. It like gives a diagnostic result. And, th and they said that this appear, makes it appear that you had a heart attack. You need to go to a cardiologist immediately. And I mean, by immediately, I mean right now. So I left the doctor, went to the cardiologist, and they did whatever. And I ended up having a stent. So, excuse me. What they told me 
what he told me was that normally they would do exploratory surgery, like, uh, you know, with the camera to see what's going on there and decide if they need a stent. And when I told him my story about walking up the hill, he said, well, you gave yourself a stress test, essentially. And from what you've told me, we're going to go ahead and assume that you need a stent. And, um, and you know, so they can have my consent to do it. That way they didn't do the procedure twice. So he's like, I'm going to go in there and I promise you when I get in there, I'm going to see you need one. So if you give me permission to do it, we can just do it once and be done. So I said, yeah, do it. Okay, so we did it. And they, when he was, when they did like a, um, like a, I think it might have been a sonogram. I forget. They, it, it wasn't just an x-ray and it wasn't an MRI, whatever it was. I think it was a sonogram they did of my heart. And they did that. I was all part of the procedure. And I'm getting to a point, I promise. And so I got done and he showed me um, the before and after images of when they did the stent. And he showed the before one and you could see my main coronary artery like it was dark and that's where blood was. And then it got tiny and then it was gray like there's no blood after that. And then after the stent, all, there was all these were like a spider web of, of blood vessels around my heart. They were all black. Ultrasound, thank you. They were all black and where blood all was going now because of the stent. And so he, showed, he said, see this before picture? He's, he's, like, he's like in his 60s. He goes, I've been a cardiologist for all these years, 40-something years, and I've seen hundreds and hundreds of ultrasounds, thank you, that look like this. This one is the third one I've seen that looks just like this of a live guy. He said, typically, this is the ultrasound of a dead person. That's how close I came to dying, right? Um, so that's what I mean when I'm urging you. If, if, if I had go back to my 35-year-old self with that, with that ultrasound, I bet I could be a little more convincing about getting into shape, right? So uh, you're asking me this question about playing paintball to get in shape. Um, is paintball great exercise as far as cardio? No, not really. But if, if you're, if it means that you're getting out more, moving around more, and it might motivate you to do something about health, then by all means, I can't possibly recommend it enough. Um, so yeah, the end of the, uh, speaking of ranting, I'm not even talking about paintball now and you guys are still with me. That's a little amazing. Um, so Jim Lively's field, Nashville of 85. Nice, Roy. Uh, yeah, I didn't play quite that long ago. I actually, you know what? I did play paintball in the mid '80s. I graduated from high school in '85, and uh, I had some friends who played uh, in the in the '80s. I said I started in the '90s. That's not true. I did start my sort of hardcore being into it in the '90s, but I played a handful of times in the '80s, and I, I remember I borrowed a VM68. Um, yeah, I, I did play that. It's pretty great. Recommend recommendations to um, paint to shoot for practice. Not really. The only thing I would recommend is don't get paint that's so crappy and cheap that it's annoying you, right? That it breaks in the barrel all the time or that you can't hit the side of a barn from the inside because that's not helping anybody. Um, paint should be, you know, if you have a choice at your local field, get whatever the cheapest one is that shoots okay. Um, if you aren't playing at a field paint only place, um, there's, you know, there's a bunch of different ones. I've seen, as long as it's fresh, and it can be a challenge to find it fresh, probably because it comes from Europe, I believe. It's, it, Prochar is Russian, but I think it comes from Europe. But anyway, I've been shooting Prochar lately, and even the cheap Prochar, if it's fresh, uh, shoots really good. And we, and it's it's cheap. I mean, it's under $40 a case, and uh, it's, it's shooting pretty good. Um, GI field paint, in my experience, is bad. I've uh, been shooting it at this one particular place we play for over a year, and it's like consistently terrible. It's either so brittle you can't shoot it. I, mean, I still have some in pods back there, and I've mentioned it in a, in a marker video. I mean, I don't, I don't, I you know, I own a million markers. I don't have a single marker that can reliably shoot it. it is, it's a, everything is a blender when they use that paint. It's terrible. So I would not use GI field paint. Um, but yeah. Um, Terry, I love to see those big guys try to play aggressive. Yeah, well, you, know, you have to be smart. Listen, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not running to the 50 off the break because it takes half an hour for me to get there. And I'll get shot like 900 times. You, it's not, you have to not be stupid. Um, <laughs> Southern Bells. Yeah, this is a family channel. We don't need to talk about that. Um, Lucy, I am glad I'm still here too. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um... Let's see what else we have. Keto. Yeah, I'm doing low carb now. My and my blood sugar has been at a clinically not diabetic level since January. 
It doesn't mean I'm not diabetic anymore, but my blood sugar is very good now as a result. Um, and Porter, nice job losing the weight. I was 360 at one point. I'm about 260 now. I need to get to about 200. I'm going to get there. And when I do, snake on the brake. Um, let's see. Ultrasound. Yeah, so um, Joshua, I believe you. You sound like you know what you're talking about. I can't remember. I'm, I'm sure I didn't use the right terminology, but that was the process I went through. I've heard that APX is pretty good, but I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard APX is pretty good. Um, yeah, so Lucy, I'm t I promise you, six, being 16, it, every year you go on, the harder it gets. Your metabolism slows down. And not only that, but momentum is a real thing, right? Like, the, the longer you're out of shape, the easier it is to stay out of shape. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I don't know. I don't know how else to explain it, but it, it matters. And if there's any, it's hard. But you don't. I mean, I, I don't have to tell you it's hard. I'm 53 years old, and I'm still a fat guy. I'm trying to. I'm working on it as best I can. But um, if it was easy, I would have been 185 35 years ago. You know, I, w I was. I played college baseball, and even then, I was fat and slow. And I, I was able to play Division II baseball because I was a really good hitter. But I couldn't run, you know. I've always, relatively speaking, I was a lot more athletic than I than I am now. But um, yeah, even then, I, I was too big, and it hindered my athletic. I'm, I don't want to say career, like I was going to be a pro, but my I love athletics, and and I was hindered by it. And if it was easy, I wouldn't have spent my entire life overweight. Um, but um, I, I I mean, there's nothing I can say, right? I mean, I I, I implore you to find a way to motivate yourself to be in better shape. Because if you don't do it, the older you get, not only is it harder, but the ramifications become worse. And I don't want to be hearing your story about how you nearly died of a heart attack or worse when you were 47 years old. So I'm begging you to do something about it. Um, so you can be a lifelong, long, airtime paintball mafia member. Um... So let's see, snake on the break. Yeah, buddy. Um, Army x ray tech, that makes sense. You have some knowledge there. Um, well, I mean, unless you're seven feet five, Lucy, and let's be honest, I'm not being mean, unless you're immensely tall, 250 is really big. I mean, I'm 6'3, and you can tell by the way I'm built that I'm wide. I'm not just a fat guy. I'm like a wide, big guy. I'm never going to weigh 155 or whatever, right? I'm six foot three, and 260 is what I weigh right now. And I need I could lose 70 pounds. So you have to be honest with yourself. And I don't, I'm not I'm not talking to you personally. I'm saying people in general. If you are 16 and 5'8 and 250, uh, that's big. And I'm only saying that in an effort to help you. Maybe, maybe that's if you know. It's kind of like when when people tell their friends they should quit smoking. Like, yeah, no shit. We all know that smoking is bad for you, right? Like, you don't have to tell me. Well, my attitude about that is always I I care about you, and maybe my mentioning I don't harp on people, but if I mention it one time, maybe that moves you one one hundredth of one percent towards doing it. And eventually, maybe my comment will be the straw that breaks camel's back and you'll find the motivation. And that's why I'm saying these things. Not to pick on you or whatever, because I care. And I, I beg you, don't be me and wait until you're on a hospital bed having just narrowly missed dropping dead of a heart attack at 40-something years old. Because that's where this goes. I promise. I've been there. Um, all right. So... Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to... And on that note, um, I'm going to wrap it up. I know people are dropping off. I love all of you. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you come back next time. Uh, my next video is not going to be a live stream. I'm making a commitment right now. My next video will be an actual video. Um, these are super fun, and they're e much easier to do than regular videos, so it's easy to get lazy and <laughs> just do this. But don't forget, um, email airtimepaintball at gmail.com with your information so I can mail you airtime paintball mafia decals and you're going to take pictures of them on your gear like preferably hopefully you'll be playing somewhere or whatever 
and um, and I will come up with a good giveaway for you. I promise. Um, we'll do a drawing. I'll probably give away more than one thing. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Uh, yeah, I, uh, Jeffrey, thanks for coming. Um, Southern Bells. Yeah, we, it, it, being in shape is like the gift that keeps on giving, right? Not only do you feel better, like emotionally, like you, it, you just feel better. Like I'm, I, even though, like I said, I keep saying I'm still fat, obviously, but I feel a lot better about myself than I did when I was 360. I promise you. Even though I have a long way to go, it's all relative, right? Um, and now that I've been exercising and playing paintball, am I snake on the break guy? No, but. Uh, I can move around some. And when I first started playing, I was so creaky and old feeling. Like, I couldn't even barely make it to home off the off the break. Like, four steps. You know what I mean? It was awful, right? And so any amount matters. Any amount matters. 2% is 2% better than before. So if you can find some motivation to do anything, doing anything is better than doing nothing. And um, any little bit, can be the beginning of momentum for you. And that's my attitude about that. It's the only reason I say it. Not because I'm trying to be preachy or holier than thou or, or whatever. Because uh, I certainly, not that anybody should ever do that, but I am, certainly have no room to talk about how, you know, you should be in shape. Yeah, really? Where have I been for the last 40 years, right? So, um, email is, uh, hey, I'll put it in here again. What was the email? Whoops, can't type my own email address. That is the email, airtimepaintball at gmail.com. Um, <clears throat> send that. Lucy, you too. You're probably gone already, but oh, have a good night. Returning paintball at 31. Um, Thomas Bain. Uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, you know, I, I remember somebody asked a question in there if you're still here, by the way. Um, about switching hands. Yes, switching hands is an imperative. Someone asked me earlier, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to keep drawing this out. You know, like I always say, feel free to, to bag out. I know I'm not trying to keep everybody here. Somebody asked me a question about do I switch hands or not? 100% you have to switch hands. Um, if you're trying to be competitive and be good at playing paintball, when you don't switch hands, you necessarily expose more of yourself from behind a bunker when you shoot. Um, and it's not comfortable to shoot with your off hand. This is what I recommend, and it works extremely well. Go out and play with your buddies and make a commitment that, like, let's whatever. Say you're out there playing and you've been playing all morning and it's 10 a.m. Make a commitment that from now until lunch, I'm just, of course, obviously making an example, I'm going to play, like, if you're right-handed, offhand will be your left hand, right? Play for that whole time only left-handed. Never switch. Even when you're going out the right, don't switch. Play left-handed the whole time. You do that, like two or three times and you'll be a left-handed mastermind i promise you it's not as hard as it seems it just takes muscle memory and repetition and it takes your eye time to learn the the reference being different when you when your dominant eye is looking down the sight line of the marker versus when you switch over here and now your dominant eye is on a different axis from where the marker is uh, that takes time to um to get to where your brain will do it for you and um yeah, all it's I, I, that's the best way to learn in my opinion just to go for like two hours at a time and play the whole time offhanded even if you're coming out the other side of a bunker never switch just offhanded and do that a few times and you'll be stopped, uh, shocked at how fast you get better at it i'm at a point now one thing actually you know, i i need to work on this more i am slow at reloading offhanded uh, I'm like a ninja when I do it. I can, I can keep shooting and never let up a never let up a uh, a lane and reload pod after pod uh, with my left hand while shooting right handed. But when I when I'm off handed, I shoot fine. I'm accurate and quick, but I don't reload fast. So that's my that's my thing. Yeah, see, tank with marker. Um, that's my thing that I need to work on. Uh, about is reloading. I'm not as fit. In fact, at our scrimmage last weekend, I got shot in the hopper. Remember I mentioned that wedge in our layout where I'm going to have to run and dive in there? I actually did a little bit of a knee slide, but believe it or not, I ran up there and I was playing in that wedge shooting snake side, which was my offhand from this particular part. And when I, when I was shooting still, and when I can, the wedge uh, is this way, so I'm, it's not on the other side, it's right where I am. And when I reached back to load and get my pot, I kind of like floated around somehow to where my hopper came up above that wedge and I got shot in the hopper. 
because I my poor offhanded reloading skill. So that's something to consider too, not just shooting. So, you know, consider that as well. Um, and yeah, Jeffrey, practicing switching hands the, yourself is, um, that matters too, just the switch. But that doesn't take long to get. Um, you, if you should be able to practice that, look for a few minutes a day, a handful of times and have that. It's, it's, switching hands isn't, shouldn't be terribly difficult. It's the confidently... Uh, shooting a stream and like I said reloading too and that's something I need to work on I, like I said I got I literally got shot out because of a reloading mistake uh, just this weekend so uh, yeah strange hand well, I call I that I should call that Thomas um, yeah you know how I was saying how you go out and play for two hours offhanded I call it the stranger try it um, yeah, one hand shooting is not easy. It's another thing to practice. It really helps to have a good tank, but my tank, so you can't see over here, they have Exalt, those rubber, um, they cover a lot of the tank, the tank cover, and it helps really one handed to pull it into your shoulder to get a nice stable br bridge. And if you have something good that has traction, uh, hey, my son's here. You can come in. I'm, I'm live streaming. Hey, this is Jackson. Say hi. Hi. They, they can only see your neck. <laughs> um, that's actually Jackson's M3 back there now. Jackson has adopted the M3. Um, you going to bed? Yeah. I love you. Okay, you, I love you. You say good night to me on your on uh to to my tens of thousands of fans that are mm, that are online. Thousands. Yeah, well, 39 apparently right now or 36. Good night, buddy. Good night. Uh, um. So yeah, thanks. Um. I forgot what I was saying about the offhanded thing. What was I saying, Biggs? Oh, yeah, one-handed shooting. It helps to have something that grips the tank well because it'll, the tank will slide around in your jersey if you don't have something like that. And, um, yeah, he looks exactly like me. He's like a rail. He, he's like, I, he, look, he looks like uh, I look like someone who ate him. <laughs> uh, um, he's really fun to play with. He's the one who got me back playing. He's a good guy. Um yeah, right? You shoot three heads off the break. <laughs> TJS, who, are you someone I know personally? I don't, I don't recognize that TJS. Jackson shoots three heads off break. Um, he, he has shot people off the break. And he's also, uh, when he's got his confidence going, he's a, he's a great run-through guy too. Um, but uh, anyhow, yeah. So, um, he's scary. He can pop his head in. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, he's a goofball. Um Wait for see if you answer that. TJ, are you? Uh, I don't know who that is. Is that I don't recognize TJS. Is that someone? Are you someone I've met? Is it a secret? I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah, no giveaway today. Sorry, I didn't have time to plan anything. But we're gonna do that decal thing for sure. And I'm gonna wrap it up. We've been at this. Wow, it's almost 11. I started at 8:30. Thank you guys so much for showing up. Uh, I'm gonna hang it up, and um, I will see you next time. Thanks. And by the way, if you ever have any questions or subjects that you want covered, post in the Airbook, paint, uh, Airbook, Airtime Paintball Mafia Facebook group. Post in there. What do you want to talk about? Always happy to bring it up. Oh, cool. Okay. Hey, random. That's okay. I love you anyway. I love all of you. I will uh, talk to you next time. Have a great night.